the Buffaloes, the Baylor Bears, payback time. Last year, the Baylor Bears clawed their way to victory over the Buffs. This year, the Buffs are out for revenge. Hi, I'm Les Shapiro, and I'm Dave Logan, inviting you to join us from deep in the heart of Texas. Where the Buffs are going to try to kick up some dust against Baylor. Yeehaw. It's a wild time in Waco. See you, Baylor, Saturday morning at 11, only on News 4. Brought to you by these companies for Colorado. The Bill McCartney Show, Sunday nights at 1035 on News 4. The following is a presentation of News 4 Sports. The air era has begun, and with success in Boulder. Led by Cornell Stewart's record-setting performance last week, Bill McCartney has proven you can teach old buffs some new tricks. Now CU takes its aerial act on the road for a grudge match against the Baylor Bears. Last year at Folsom Field, a big bear paw ended CU's 11-game winning streak and any hope of a repeat national championship. And now the Bears are back. Under the intense heat of the Texas sun, the Buffaloes are looking for revenge. See you in Baylor. It's heating up in Waco. The kickoff is next. Sports presents CU Buffaloes football live from Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco, Texas. It's the University of Colorado Buffaloes versus the Baylor University Bears. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Waco, Texas, in the campus of Baylor University. I'm Les Shapiro, along with Dave Logan, and you might notice we're not in our usual garb, coat and tie, because of the very muggy conditions here in uh, Waco this afternoon. Thank goodness, huh? Thank goodness is right. Uh, Bill McCartney said that he felt like because of the weather conditions, Baylor might have a 21-point advantage. Uh, we didn't want to lose 21 pounds during the course of the contest, although we both could probably stand a shed of feet. Uh, yeah, I can stand to lose 8 <laughs> or 10 pounds. Let's go down to the field now, and Mark Mack, now she'll tell us exactly how how hot it is on that artificial turf. Mark? Thank you very much, Les. You might be able to see one of the fans they have along the CU sidelines like you've alluded to. Bill McCartney very concerned about the heat here today, but I tell you right now, the wind is blowing through here. It's warm, but it is very comfortable. In fact, where I'm sitting, it is downright cool because I'm sitting in front of an air conditioner. See, you brought these air conditioners in. Fearful of this heat here at Waco, Texas. But I tell you, what the Baylor Bears ought to be more fearful of is a bad mental attitude. We were talking to a Baylor student who happens to be from Boulder before the ball game. He was down on the CU sidelines. He was telling me he's got a Baylor offensive lineman in one of his classes, and that offensive lineman yesterday was sitting around moaning and groaning in class saying, we are going to get our rear ends kicked tomorrow. CU is just too tough for us. Baylor, of course, last week losing 10-9 to to Louisiana Tech. The Bears do not have a very good mental attitude coming into this ball game against the 12th rated Buffs. Back up to you guys. First thing Mark did when he walked into the stadium was look for the ice cream concessionaire. Let's talk a little football now. Cordell Stewart, starting quarterback for the Buffs in his debut last week. Records left and right. Can he continue that week after week? Well, we'll find out. I, I would be very doubtful that he can put the, the tight numbers up against every team that he did against CSU. What Cordell needs to do is continue to show great poise, which he did last week, make the right call to the line of scrimmage, get his team in a position to be successful, and then just gain maturity as the offense does. Let's talk about the other side of the ball. J.J. Joe, the returning quarterback for Baylor University, a very athletic young man. Very good player and a guy that last year against the CU bus in Boulder threw for 233 yards. He makes the option work. You must take care of him and try not to let him get to the perimeter. He's an excellent athlete and a guy that CU will have to watch here this afternoon. The CU defensive coach is fairly concerned about their unit because they didn't show very well against CSU last week. Well, I think they're concerned because they didn't stop the fullback game. They really didn't play as well as they're going to have to this year. CU must stop Robert Strait, the 260-pound fullback. They cannot let him run as John Ivlo did last week for the CSU Rams. They must tackle better than they did last week as well. All right, it's CU and Baylor, and the kickoff from Waco is next. We're at Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco, Texas. Expecting a crowd of between 40 and 45,000 today. The stadium seats 48,000. 500. We've already told you about the muggy conditions here in Waco. 
The temperature at game time, 82 degrees. The humidity very high, and you can feel it, 67%, and a slight wind out of the south at 10 miles an hour. Well, the series between these two teams has gone to Baylor. Baylor leads the all-time series, four games to three. The last two games have gone to Baylor. Last year, the most recent game at Folsom Field, the Bears beat CU 16 to 14, which snapped a couple of streaks for CU, the longest winning streak in the nation, which at that time stood at 11 games in a row, and the Buffs had won 15 in a row at home until that loss to Baylor. They've also met in a bowl game. 1986, Baylor beat CU in the Blue Bonnet Bowl 21 to nine. Well, the Buffs are no strangers to teams in the Southwest Conference. Over the years, CU has won seven against teams from the SWC and lost 11. Now look at your coach from Baylor, Grant Taft. We'll talk about him in a second after we tell you that Baylor has played many, many games against the Big Eight with 20 wins as opposed to 19 losses. The captains for CU, Jim Hansen from left to right, Chad Brown in the middle, and Greg Beaker. And they come out to midfield to beat, to meet the Baylor coach uh, captains for the coin flip. CU is 1-0 on the year with an opening win against CSU last week at Folsom Field. And Baylor comes into this ball game 0-1 with a shocking loss to Louisiana Tech last week on the home field here, Floyd Casey Stadium. A 10-9 loss on a last-second field goal. So the coin flip went Baylor's way, but Baylor chose to kick off. CU will receive it to begin the game. Bill McCartney in his 11th year as the Buffs head coach, a record of 66, 49, and 3. He has a son that goes to Baylor, his youngest son, Mark. So this is a bit of a homecoming for Bill. And Grant Taff on the other sideline in his 21st and final year as the Baylor head coach. This year he is the head coach and the athletic director at the school. But there is a school law, school policy, that says no one man can hold both positions. So Taft will give up the head coaching job to become the full-time athletic director next year. By the way, no successor named to him yet. See you in the polls is Ranked 12th this week by Associated Press, number 13 in USA Today CNN Coaches Poll. The man kicking off for Baylor, speaking with the umpire right now, is number 46, Mike Shilton, a freshman out of Grand Prairie, Texas. And back to receive it for the Buffs. A couple of young men named Eric Mitchell, He's to the left of your screen. And T.J. Cunningham on the right. Also back to receive it for CU is number 33, James Hill. A lot of empty seats here at Floyd Casey Stadium. Folks around here a bit down on the program especially after last week's shocker, the loss to Louisiana Tech. If you're wondering, Waco, Texas is about 100 miles south of Dallas. We're about the middle of the state and about ready to kick off this football game. That's Eric Mitchell up to the 28-yard line. Let's set the CU offense for you. 
There's your man at quarterback, Cordell Stewart, the sophomore out of Marrero, Louisiana. And the rest of the Buffs offense, the lone running back, Lamont Warren. The receivers are Westbrook, Eric Mitchell, Charles Johnson, the tight end, Christian Fourier. And your offensive line, West Ivy, Stoltenberg, Craig Anderson, and Jim Hansen. First down for the Buffs, their first play from scrimmage. Stewart comes out throwing, complete to Eric Mitchell. He is across the 35 to the 36. And Michael McFarlane, the tackle there. Your Baylor defense up front. Fontenot, Lewis, Strahan, Pearson. The linebackers are Burleson, Bruder, and a pretty good one in Lachey Maston. And the defensive backs, McFarlane, who just made that tackle, Caldwell, Spencer, and Lewis. A gain of nine on that last play for the Buffs, so it's second and one. Three wideouts in the game right now. Stewart drops the snap. The ball is loose. Baylor picks it up. And the ball will go the Bears' way. So the second play from scrimmage, CU turns it over. Well, we talked about CU earlier and trying to stay away from the turnovers, obviously, on their side of the 50-yard line. It didn't look like Cordell Stewart ever had the football while pulling away from the center. You take a look, Stewart. On second and one, tough to see. I don't think he ever had the ball on it. Came free, and Baylor with Michael McFarland on top of it has an excellent opportunity to get the scoreboard first. J.J. Joe at quarterback for Baylor. He hurt CU last week, as Dave, or last year, as Dave told you, with 233 yards passing. So first down for Baylor at the CU 31. Over the middle, Joe overthrows Mike McKenzie, his tight end. And that's a good thing for the Buffs because he would have had a free path to the end zone. There's your Baylor offense, Joe the quarterback, a couple of pretty good running backs and Mims and Robert Strait. Bonner, Miller, and McKenzie are the receivers. And the offensive line, all new. No returnees from last year as starters. Second and 10 from the 31, the option. This is Mims. Inside the Buffs 15, stopped by Chris Hudson. We well, talked about Baylor's ability to get into the option attack as you take a look at the front seven of the CU Buffs. Elder, Bruner, Renfro, Brown, Johnson, Beaker, and Wolfort. The four secondary members of Deion Figures and Dwayne Davis seeing their first action of the year. Not a good job that time of playing the option attack, and Mims was all by himself when he got to the crease. First down for Baylor at the CU 15. Mims again. Stopped for no gain. Take your pick. We'll take Jeff Bruner on that tackle. There were a lot of white jerseys. We talk so much about great defensive teams, and many feel like Colorado this year eventually will turn into one of those. But when you're put in a situation where your back is against the wall, your offense gives up the football on a short field, you must keep the opponent out of the end zone many, many times. Force them to line up and kick a field goal. Give them three points if you must but don't give up six. Well, here's a good test for the Buffs right now. Second and 10 for Baylor. Three running backs lined up behind the quarterback. He fumbles the snap, and J.J. Joe decides to go forward with it. He gains four yards. Ted Johnson, the tackle. J.J. Joe may have had his finest game of the year last year in Boulder. We told you he threw for 233 yards. Also ran for 68. Baylor right back to the line of scrimmage. It's third and six. And Joe doesn't like what he sees, so he calls a timeout. 
J.J. Joe, a senior from Arlington, Texas. And as he talks things over, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back in Waco. This telecast is an exclusive presentation of KCNC-TV and the National Broadcasting Company. Any reproduction or rebroadcast of this telecast without the expressed written consent of KCNC-TV is prohibited. And right now, the Buffs are trying to prohibit Baylor from getting into the end zone. A CU fumble on the second play from scrimmage, and Baylor right now at the CU 11-yard line. It's third and six. Joe, touchdown! No! No! The receiver did not hold on to the ball. That was the X-back, Melvin Bonner. He was in the end zone all alone, but couldn't hold on. Well, Bonner caught a long touchdown pass last year in Boulder, 74 yards worth. He escapes the bump of Dennis Collier, bottom of the screen. You can't see. He's already inside, and that's a catch you just simply have to make. He got away from Dennis Collier right at the line of scrimmage. This thing on the money, and Melvin Bonner just gave up six points for Baylor. So Baylor will have to go for three. Trey Wire in for a 28-yard field goal attempt. He was perfect last week, three for three, and he's perfect on that kick right there. So Baylor very quickly capitalizing on CU's first mistake of the afternoon, and the Bears take a three to nothing lead. If you're into this sort of thing, the CU Buffs came in as nine and a half point favorites, according to the odds makers. Tell you this, when you're struggling as a team offensively, and Baylor, of course, has done that, at least in the first game, you have to make catches like that. That's an easy one. And it might have been Melvin Bonner trying to show the football a little bit early instead of just tucking it away after catching it with his hands. Meaning he wanted to hot dog it a bit? Well, I, it, it looked like it's tough to see. I don't think he ever had complete control, but sometimes when it's easy, when it looks so easy as a receiver, and you're beating your man cleanly, the ball is right there, you get a nice catch with your hands, you get a bit lazy. And that time, Melvin Bonner, I think, did. They've had a couple of guys wide open right behind the linebackers so far this afternoon. Well, that one was on the corner. Simply man-to-man uh, -man coverage, and Dennis Collier not doing a good job of taking away the inside. You have to take away that inside when you're playing bump and run, and you have no help in the middle. So maybe the Buffs should consider themselves lucky they're down just 3 to nothing. Baylor had a couple of opportunities to put six on the scoreboard right away. And now the Bears will kick it off. Doing the kicking will be Chilton once again. And back to receive it for the Buffs. Eric Mitchell, James Hill, and T.J. Cunningham. Eric Mitchell, two yards deep, decides to put his knee down. So the Buffs will start with it at their own 20. The last scoring drive for Baylor. Five plays, 20 yards, ending in a 28-yard field goal. Remember, they recovered the Buffs' fumble at the CU 31-yard line. Baylor University, the world's largest Baptist institution of higher education, they call it. Enrollment, 12,000 students. Right now, see you the ball. Cordell Stewart, the quarterback. The Buffs come out running. Lamont Warren to the 30-yard line. Michael McFarlane, the tackle. Warren picks up 10 yards on that play. Well, you can see the possibilities of this offense are endless. This just a counter tray. Three wide receivers, Westbrook in motion. You've got nobody on the outside, including no cornerback. What motion with Michael Westbrook and Lamont Warren able to get into that hole quickly. Second and inches for the first down. Warren again. And he takes a loss of about a yard. First man to hit him was the linebacker, Lachey Maston. Well, there's a guy that last year had a great game, 14 tackles against CU in Boulder. Defensively, the Bears are not nearly as big nor strong up front. They lost Santana Dotson, Robin Jones, both players were all Southwest Conference last year. Lachey Maston, probably their best defensive player. Third and one. Timeout on the field. There is a penalty flag down. 
That's got to be against the offense before the ball is even snapped. Illegal procedure. That'll send the Buffs back five yards to the 24, and it'll bring up third and six. Three wide receivers out. Stewart to the tight end, Christian Fourier. Let's see where this ball is marked. He caught it for first down yardage. Then he was sent back behind the first down marker. Boy, they're not going to give him a good spot at all. Oh, my, that's a horrible spot. Keep in mind, if in the judgment of the officials, Fourier was trying to run after the initial hit, then you can mark it back. But it didn't look like Fourier, who was taken back with the hit, should be marked back at the 28-yard line. Lamont Warren, you can see on the outside, but Fourier will come from the right side. So he caught the ball well past the 30-yard line. I think now they have changed the spot, although I'm not sure they gave him a first down with the movement of the football. He caught the ball on the other side of the 30-yard line, and right now the ball is marked dead on the 30. And indeed, it is a first down now. They're moving the yard markers. Well, now they're changing their mind again. They brought the ball up two yards. Now they're bringing it back. And Bill McCartney, obviously not happy. They just took a first down away from him. Well, every decision like that is, is truly subjective, but that's just not a good spot. Fourier caught the ball on the plus 30-yard line. So instead of starting over with a first down, the Buffs are going to have to punt. And Mitch Berger will be in to do that. The return man for Baylor is Andrew Swayze. Last week, one punt return for 17 yards against Louisiana Tech. This one takes a big CU bounce inside the 15 and down by the Buffs at the 11-yard line. So Mitch Berger with a monster 67-yard punt. Well, the Buffs and Mitch Berger Caught a break on a big bounce. And it ended up being a 67-yard punt for Berger. Well, that's why they teach punt returners to feel the ball. If you can get there, you got to catch it. That ball hit at the 35-yard line and then rolled some 24 yards. Baylor will start with it from its own 11-yard line. We've got 9.47 to go first quarter. Baylor lays it 3 to nothing. That's the fullback, Robert Strait, for a yard. Tackle made by Leonard Renfro. The Buffs' big defensive end, and Chad Brown, the linebacker. Chad looking better after last week, where he suffered back spasms throughout the game against CSU. It's second and nine for Baylor. The option, Joe keeps it and reaches out to the 18-yard line. Gain of six. And Chris Hudson makes a good tackle there. As a free safety, you're going to be isolated on the quarterback in the option game more times than not. The fake to the fullback, Brown has the pitch man, and you've got to see 47 appear quickly. And he's got to make that tackle, otherwise the quarterback will hurt you all day. Third and four for Baylor. And Baylor wastes its second time out of this half. Just one timeout left for the Bears now. I'll tell you what Baylor's doing with J.J. Joe, a quarterback. He is coming up reading the defense to strengthen the defense and actually audibleizing right there. Robert Strait is telling David Mims, the tailback, Strait's the fullback, as to which way the play is going, but he's pat patting either side of his body. I think CU has already picked that up. J.J. Joe that time wanted to make sure on third down that he was in the right play to be successful. I think the mind games are kind of interesting here. Baylor, I don't think, has run the same formation yet today. And CU on defense is showing Baylor a number of different things. Kind of a chess match. 
Timeouts remaining. We told you Baylor has one. The Buffs haven't burned any. They've got their full complement of three left this half. And we've got 8.38 to go in the first quarter. Grant Tapp, soon to be solely the athletic director here at Baylor, 59 years old. He's got CU's number over the years. Not greatly. Two wins against one loss. Six times the Southwestern Conference Coach of the Year. 1972, he took over a program a lot of people said should drop out of the SWC because they weren't competitive, but Taft turned it around. Third and four for Baylor. That pass is deflected by the linebacker, John Knutson. And that'll bring up fourth down for Baylor. And even though J.J. Joe had a great game last year in Boulder, if you can keep an option team in third down situations to four or more, you really disrupt the rhythm of the offense. If you take away the fullback and you force them into passing situations, they're not nearly as good a team as if you don't. Rhett Delaney last week averaged a little better than 38 yards of punt against Louisiana Tech. The return man for CU is Dion Figures. A nice punt. Figures from his own 27. And a penalty flag down. Boy, Dave, if he'd have gone up the middle, he'd have had a few yards there. A 54-yard punt, a four-yard return for Figures. The penalty you saw goes against CU. Bill McCartney poo-pooed everybody that thought his team would be a big favorite today. He knows what it's like to go against any Southwestern Conference team. He's had his problems in the past. And he's having his problems right now. CU has been penalized twice today for 15 yards. That penalty sends the ball back to the 20-yard line. It's first and 10 for the Buffs. Lamont Warren, thrown for a loss of two. And throwing him was Albert Fontenot. That time, Baylor with a seven-man rush, man-to-man -man in the secondary. Four wide receivers, four defensive backs. Maybe just the wrong play selection at the wrong time. Sometimes you have to guess what you're going to see in first down. That time, the Buffs got a pretty good rush up front. Second and 12 for Cordell Stewart and the Buffs. again back at the 11 a loss of seven yards Lachey Maston into that backfield very quickly along with Robbie Burleson well Baylor's not taking much time up front to put pressure on the quarterback and you can see left side of your screen got a lot of folks coming and not a good job getting a hat on people Maston from the right side Burleson from the left side two linebackers I think Baylor's gambled on both first and second down that Colorado would not throw the ball deep or would not be able to block him up front. Third and 18. A good rush. Stewart. Gets the first down and more across the 40 to the 43-yard line before Chris Lewis runs him out. If you think back to some of the great Oklahoma teams, when clubs struggled to stay on the field with them, and invariably you'd find them in a third and 12 or third and 15, third and 18 situation, it always killed teams that one of those quarterbacks would look downfield, find nothing, almost get sacked, and then wind up picking up the first down. And Cordell Stewart is in the same kind of mold as those great Oklahoma quarterbacks. A 31-yard run when Baylor had Colorado pinned deep in their own territory. First down for the Buffs, their own 43. Lamont Warren, penalty flags down. Warren gets back to the line of scrimmage. Lachey Maston, the tackle. The 
what you're seeing now is is the maturity of an offense the growing pains as Bill McCartney has called them before of a team trying to figure out what's going on the other side of the football there must be trouble Bill's taking his cap off already rather self-destructing a bit here in the first quarter they got to regain their poise give them something simple that they can be successful with and let them get into the flow of the game because right now they're not Well, the penalty on that last play, again, went against the Buffs. Sends them back to their own 34. Plus, Baylor very aggressive defensively with Strahan and uh, Pearson, Lewis, Fontenot on the left side. That's fine. You're going to make some big plays with this style of defense, but sooner or later, you're, you're going to give up a big play. First and 20 for CU. Cordell Stewart with some work to do. Complete. To Lamont Warren, and he is at the 45. Well short of the first down, Lachey Maston, the linebacker, on the coverage there. Well, you've got a weapon when you can line up your best running back, and he can run a quick slant like this. Watch him put his hands above his head and catch the ball. A nice catch. Lamont Warren's going to be featured not only as a running back in this offense, but he also is a guy that you want to get the football to outside. Well, last week against CSU, he ran for 72 yards, and he caught two passes. It's second and eight. Again, complete. This time to Ray Carruth, and he is pushed out at the Baylor 35-yard line. Ray Carruth, the freshman, will be in the slot. He'll just come down and run an out pattern. Watch where the football hits Ray Carruth. Right in the hands and in stride. You have to throw that pattern a lot of times in practice. You've got to make sure the ball is on the outside. A perfect throw by Cordell Stewart. A nice catch by the freshman. Ray Carruth out of Sacramento, California. He was a running back in high school, and the CU coaches are drooling over this young man. First down for the Buffs at the Baylor 35. We've got 5-10 to go. First quarter. Warren. No game. Lee Bruder, the tackle. Bruder's a guy that Bill McCartney likes very much. Hurt his knee in the spring. An arthroscopic surgery. Now just starting to work his way back into the lineup. Baylor defensively, again, not as big up front. And so they will take more chances. They will gamble a bit more, which... Cordell Stewart probably likes because when you throw the ball as an offense and you throw it a lot, you want people to come after you. You want them to blitz. Stewart perfect on the day. Four for four throwing. It's second and ten. Lamont Warren. Four yards. Albert Fontenot the tackle. Lamont Warren out of Englewood, California. The Buffs' leading rusher last year, 830 yards. This year so far, coming into the game, 66 yards. Third and seven for CU from the Baylor 32-yard line. Complete again, Michael Westbrook. Again, let's see where they place it. It looks like they're going to give the Buffs first down yardage on this one. Well, they should because he had first down yardage. Westbrook just with a simple outcut. Again, I, I can't impress upon you enough the location of the football where Cordell Stewart puts this for Michael Westbrook. I mean, as a receiver, you couldn't ask for anything more. Westbrook able to hang on. CU picks up yet another first down. There's a guy that's going to be a big play guy his entire career at CU. Big and strong and fast. And he is one of the favorite targets of Cordell Stewart. Well, hard to believe he's only a sophomore, huh? Really is. First down from the Baylor 23. Lamont Warren on the delay. A gain of three. Lachey Mast in the tackle, along with Sean Cravens. A couple of linebackers bringing Stewart down. Excuse me, Warren down. Cordell Stewart, number 10, has been so impressive in his time as a starting quarterback. His senior year in high school... He was 51 of 109 for 942 yards, 17 touchdowns through only four interceptions. He's a guy that understands defense. He also didn't play any other sports in high school except football. Wanted to concentrate on that. 
Second and eight. Wide open. T.J. Cunningham. Looks like he's got another first down for the Buffs at the 12-yard line of Baylor. T.J. Cunningham just waits for the football. Lined up wide left. Stewart has a chance to go into the slot. Not there. The ball gets outside in a hurry, and you just let athletes like T.J. Cunningham catch the ball and make something happen. It's a little bit like the Miami offense. You can see Cunningham is just standing out there. Bobbles the ball a bit, but stays with it. Colorado wants those great athletes to have chances to run with the football. There's a great athlete running with the football. Lamont Warren gets it down to the 10. Gain of one. And what you've seen with the draw on this series, three or four times Colorado has run the draw play, trying to slow up that charge of the Baylor front. You want to give them something to think about, except pass rush. Under two minutes to go, first quarter. The Buffs threatening. They're at the Baylor 10-yard line. It's second and nine. Stewart, with hands around his ankles, completes the pass to Westbrook. And Westbrook gets it down to the six. Blitz pickup. Westbrook sees the blitz. He'll break the pattern to the outside, and Stewart is almost sacked. McFarland and Swayze finally haul down Westbrook. But again, the strength of two players. Stewart to get the ball off. Westbrook to drag a couple of bears. Here's where Colorado, the offense last week against CSU, really faltered a bit. Once they got into scoring territory, had a tough time knocking it in. It's third and six for CU. Here they come. Stewart complete for the touchdown. It's the tight end, Christian Fourier. Well, Cordell Stewart again with a lot of poise for a sophomore. There is a Baylor player that will come unblocked right side of the screen. Stewart sees him, jumps inside, and the pass off just in time to Christian Faria. His second touchdown in as many games. Fourier has caught six passes in his CU career, four of them for scores. In for the extra point, Pat Blotto. And CU has a 7-3 lead. We've got 59 seconds to go, first quarter. And we'll be right back in Waco. Jerry's on a tight budget, but also wants the best health care protection for his family. Kathy was able to choose her doctor from the health plan with the largest selection of physicians in Colorado. And Jim has to choose a health plan for his co-workers that gives them choices, yet meets his company's bottom line. Their choice, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Colorado, for over 50 years. Good choice. No question, you have better things to do with your time than waste it. So at the Colorado National Banks, if we take up too much of it, we'll make it up to you. If we goof up, we'll make good. And if we don't treat you right, we'll make sure you know we know. Because at Colorado National, giving great service isn't a fluke or a limited time offer. It's a 130-year tradition you can count on. Yes, you can. Sports is more than just who won or lost. It's about dreams. Dreams like making it to the majors, the sun on your back. Shapiro gets one out. When I was a kid, and now they've come full circle. My kids dream of playing for the Rockies, and who knows, maybe it'll happen. And I'll be there to do the story. Now that would be a dream come true. Les Shapiro and the people he was for. Yeah. Christian Fourier will come from the left side of your screen, running diagonally across the field. The play action fake. Watch Cordell Stewart jump inside. He sees the pressure from Mike McFarlane in the corner. Gets the ball off and a nice adjustment in the end zone by Fourier. 13 plays, 80 yards. Big run on third down and 16 by Stewart. Seven minutes plus off the clock. And Colorado with the first lead of the game. And that's with a 10-minute penalty. They started with the ball from their own 20. Mitch Berger to kick off for CU. Three men back for Baylor to receive it.
but nobody will get a chance. Berger puts it out of the back of the end zone. So Berger doing his job. Did it so well last week against CSU also. And Baylor will start with the ball at its own 20. We've got 59 seconds to go first quarter. The Buffs have just taken a 7-3 lead. Trying to improve their record to 2-0. and well, Let's wait and see here if J.J. Joe again calls the plays at the line of scrimmage based on the defense he sees. Hasn't completed a pass yet today. He'll try it again. Again, wide open over the middle is Mike McKenzie. Fumble. And that's Ronnie Bradford. Who has run out of bounds at the Baylor 30. There's a penalty flag on the field. I waited to call the fumble because I wasn't sure if the officials counted it as a catch. But evidently they did. Well, McKenzie really took a shot from Chris Hudson. I think the penalty came after the fumble recovery. And if so, Colorado retains possession. You'll see the tight end wide open. Here comes Chris Hudson. will stick his helmet right in the midsection of McKenzie. That clearly a catch. And Ronnie Bradford finally rolls it down. Bradford goes out at the 30 after the Chris Hudson hit, but the penalty goes against the Buffs after the fumble recovery, and it pushes them back to the Baylor 45. That's where CU will start with it. Lamont Warren down to the 42. We talked about the Colorado defense, really, the opening series, stiffening up and holding Baylor to three points, although Baylor should have had a touchdown. Same thing here for the Baylor defense. Their offense is a grinded out kind of offense. You don't want to fall down two scores here in the first part of the game. 15 seconds to go, first quarter, the clock ticking. Lamont Warren's stats on the day, not very good, but we've got a long ways to go here. Second and seven for CU. This is Warren again. Did he fumble? Yeah. Yes. And this time Baylor recovers at its own 49-yard line. Scotty Lewis fell on the ball. Well, you'll see Lamont Warren get hit in the backfield. The counter tray and Albert Fontenot able to force Lamont Warren inside and then also come up with a fumble recovery. We're going to take a break. Baylor with the ball to start the second quarter. Today's game is brought to you by Metro Brokers, by Samsonite, and by State Farm Insurance. All companies for Colorado. And by Coors Drive. Right side of your screen, Albert Fontenot will get a good rush. Step inside the block of the guard. You can see Roger Ivey unable to kick him out. Ball stripped away, and Albert Fontenot also on the recovery. Scotty Lewis with the tackle, Fontenot with the recovery, and Baylor with the second fumble recovery of the day. Fontenot doesn't get blocked many times. It's very, very quick at 260 pounds. Yeah, they love that kid. Brad Taft calls him one of the best defensive linemen in school history. There are your first quarter stats. The Buffs on the top end of each of those categories, and on top of the score, 7-3. But Baylor has the ball. Another liberal placement for Baylor. The ball has recovered at their own 49. Since then, the officials have... Oh, well, we've switched... Yeah, we've switched sides. My mistake. They're still at the 49. <laughs> that time, J.J. Joe fell on his own back at his own 40. Now, he may have been fortunate to fall down there because Leonard Renfro was bearing down on him, and J.J. tried to make a cut and lost his footing. Loss of nine on the play. It's second and 19. Robert Strait, the fullback, hit quickly by Renfro and Jeff Bruner, the nose tackle. 
Again, Baylor, even though they lined up in a one-back offense that time, they are predominantly a running team. And J.J. Joe would much rather hand the football off to Robert Strait and David Mims than drop back and throw it 50 times. And for option teams, third down and 20 is a nightmare situation. And that's where Baylor stands right now, third and 20 not much fun for throwing teams. Timeout on the field and penalty flags. We're going to take a break while the officials hash this out. Okay, we'll keep it right here. Baylor takes a timeout. There was a penalty flag on the field. Welcome a very special group of fans to today's game. You see Grant Taft talking to J.J. Joe. AFL fans will remember Cotton Davidson, who played for the Raiders for quite some time. Davidson is the offensive coordinator here at Baylor. Third and 20, nobody wants to make calls like that. J.J. Joe saying, Coach, what do we call? I don't know. 20-yard play. It's up to you, J.J., just get me 20. <laughs> All right, let's go to the sideline right now and a report from Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thank you very much, Les. The bus on the sideline, like we talked about, you know, it is hot down here. A few things they're doing as a precaution. All the guys got their helmets off. Normally a home game at Folsom Field, they keep those helmets on, but they got all their helmets off. They're drinking a lot of water, and they're also getting wetted down, towel down with these nice towels that they've got soaked in ice over here, so they're trying to keep them cool over on the sideline. Back up to you guys. J.J. Joe, the pass incomplete. That'll bring up fourth and long for Baylor. And they'll bring out the punting unit. The punter is Rhett Delaney. Back to receive it for the Buffs. Off of a one-game suspension is Dion Figures. Delaney with a wobbly kick. And it takes a CU bounce. And down to the 31. So the Buffs will start with it there. We've got 13.26 to go. First half, they lead it 7-3. J.J. Joe, an academic All-American second team this past season, just talking to a couple of his offensive linemen, trying to figure out, hey, how can we get things going? Bears have really been stymied offensively. Well, Joe's going to have to wait because CU has the ball right now. First down at its own 34. Stewart with a lot of room. He gets it up to the 48. That was a planned run by Stewart and the CU coaching staff. Robbie Burles in the tackle. When you've got a quarterback with this kind of running ability, you must make certain in the game four or five times you let him go on a design play. And, yes, that was a quarterback draw. Cordell Stewart, big guy that once he gets into the secondary, is more like a running back than a quarterback. First down from their own 48. Lamont Warren. Across midfield, down to the 47. A gain of five, Lachey Mast in the tackle. Would you like to be in that thing? Not about, today. About no 400 thanks. degrees in that hat. Chips. Yeah, go on. Brings up second and five after the five-yard gain. Stewart going deep. Intercepted. And out of bounds goes Chris Lewis, the free safety. Now, there was a lot of contact down the right sideline, and I'm not so sure that this one might not come back. Cornell Stewart on a go route had his receiver knocked all the way out of bounds. You can see right there, Charles Johnson, and that's when the flag comes in as well. You have but five yards to make contact. 
That's exactly what the call is. Keith Caldwell, number three, I think, ran Charles Johnson completely out of bounds. Penalty goes against Baylor. The Buffs keep the ball and have a first down. And CU will have it at the Baylor 37. That's the first penalty against Baylor this afternoon. Stewart complete. And down to the 19-yard line goes Ray Carruth, the freshman out of Sacramento. Andrew Swayze, the tackle. Another great throw, Ray Carruth in the slot, bottom of the screen. You'll see him again run past the linebacker. Linebacker's supposed to take that underneath pass lane away, and yet because the throw is so accurate, just not able to do it. So Carruth picks up the first down for CU at the Baylor 19. Good protection. But not for much longer. Stewart brought down at the 17. He got a couple of yards out of it. Darrell Gardner finally the tackle. Cordell Stewart has learned in the last couple of weeks. He's a guy that doesn't want to give up the football when a scoring opportunity, and rather than force a pass, just picks up a couple of yards and lines up and tries it again. A lot of young quarterbacks on that play will throw the ball in the end zone, hoping for something good to happen. Second and seven. Wide open, Michael Westbrook, but drops the ball, and a penalty flag is down. The pass is called incomplete. Well, with all the good things that have happened to Michael Westbrook in some seven days, a few bad things have to happen, and this is one that Westbrook will catch about 99% of the time. Just tried to turn it upfield and run before he had the football. And Charles Johnson, I think, number nine, laying on the ground, was called for offensive pass interference on that very play. McCartney not very happy this afternoon of the way the flags are flying. That's the fifth penalty against CU and a costly one. It sends the bus back to the 31 yard line. So it's third and 22. CU with the ball in Baylor territory, the 31. The floater to nobody. Not a CU receiver within 20 yards of that one. And another penalty flag. Well, this may be intentionally grounding, and if so, it's a horrible call. The thought behind the rule for intentional grounding is when a quarterback is intentionally trying to avoid a sack and just get rid of the football to bail him out of a poor situation. Cordell Stewart is in no jeopardy of going down. He is all by himself. This is simply a misread route. There is nobody where Stewart thought he would be, although that thing did sail out of bounds about 10 yards, too. But I think that's, again, a poor call, and it takes CU out of field goal opportunity. And Bill McCartney and the Buffs are going to have to punt now. Mitch Berger will do it. Andrew Swayze to return. Swayze getting set for it. 
We've got 11-16 to go, first half. Berger with a high one. Bounces at the three and into the end zone. He was looking for the corner. Instead, Baylor will have the ball at its own 20. And yet another penalty flag on the field. Boy, personal foul. That may give CU a chance to line up. I believe it's an automatic first down if it's before the ball's kicked. Well, McCartney trying to figure it out. You saw previous to him, Grant oh, Tapp. Man. That call brought Grant Tapp out on the field. If, if the personal foul took place before the ball is punted, Colorado has a first down. That's the call. If it was a personal foul after the ball was kicked, you penalize Baylor, but they have possession. That thing happened in a very short period of time before Berger pooched the kick. Well, there's an official's timeout on the field. They're going to try and figure it out, and the referee comes over to talk to Grant Taff and explain it to him. six to go second quarter buffs lead in Baylor seven to three and now Grant Taff is calling over the official who made the call the umpire unfortunately we don't have that conversation but Mike Ball has been placed at the Baylor 28 yard line. And the scoreboard reads first down for the Buffs. And they've got the offensive unit in there. But the officials still talking it over. Well, One again, it's it, it determined by when the foul took place. But evidently, the foul took place before Mitch Berger hit the ball. Cordell Stewart, the CU quarterback on the sideline. Looks like they're retaping his ankle and his foot area. We don't believe he's injured. And right now, in a quarterback for the Buffs is Duke Tobin, the junior out of Arlington Heights, Illinois. This is James Hill, his first carry on the day. No gain. Helmets flying. Albert Fontenot and Scotty Lewis the tackle. And it was first and five for Colorado. I think why Baylor lost five yards, there was a timeout call, so Grant Taft could get some sort of explanation, but the Bears don't have any timeouts. So a delay of game was called on Baylor, and Colorado had first and five, and now they've got about second and four or five. But Baylor already has burned its timeouts for the first half, and we still have ten and a half minutes to go. Duke Tobin replacing Cordell Stewart at quarterback. It's second and five. Hill again, goes nowhere. Well, Cordell Stewart is retaped now and anxious to get back into the ball game. He's not hurt. He's got his helmet on and just waiting for the word from the coaches. Duke Tobin played a little last week against CSU. Third and five. Tobin is brought down by Fontenot. Back at the 36-yard line. A loss of 13. Boy, the coaches here weren't kidding. He is a good one. Oh, he's very, very quick, and he's especially quick when he's not blocked. And Duke Tobin off the counter fake will look up just in time to see number 96 right in his face. Fontenot is supposed to take the fake a little bit down the line, allowing Tobin to get outside, but nothing doing on that play. This is a 50-yard field goal attempt by Plato. It's high enough, and it's good enough. 
Guado from 50 yards, the longest field goal of his college career. And that gives CU a 10-3 lead over Baylor with 9-12 to go, second quarter. Introducing a new breed of restaurant. Trackside Dining, now at Mile High Greyhound Park. Mile High Greyhound Park, now with a new look clubhouse, too. Say, have you ever seen one of these? It's First Federal Bank's new Visa check-in card. Use it like a credit card, but it works like a check. Your charges are paid automatically from your First Federal checking account. When you get the new Visa checking card, you can get a new First Federal checking account and your first box of checks free. With all that and the new Visa checking card, why not make First Federal your bank? Since 1885, First Federal, Colorado's convenient consumer bank. It's the John Elway Toyota 93 kickoff sale. Right now, John Elway Toyota is kicking off this season with big discounts on a huge selection of 92 and 93 Toyotas. Save big on Camrys, Tercels, 4Runners, and even the all-new Corolla. When John Elway throws you a deal like this, catch it. And when you catch a deal on a new Toyota, John Elway will throw in a hand-signed signature series football. Have a ball and catch your best deal at John Elway Toyota. Next to the Denver Tech Center, just a half mile east of I-25 on Arapahoe Road. Pat Blotto, the senior out of Anaheim, California, with a 50-yard field goal to give CU a 10-3 lead. Now the Buffs will kick it off. It's Berger. And three Baylor Bears back to receive. Again, no chance for a return. Berger puts it five yards beyond the end zone. So Baylor will start at its own 20. That last scoring drive for CU and eight plays, 33 yards, and they ate up 4-14. Let's go to the sidelines and Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thank you, Les. You saw early in the game, Cordell Stewart getting that left ankle taped. He has a middle foot sprain on the left foot. That's according to trainer Dave Burton, but Cordell Stewart is expected back in the ballgame on the CU next series. Back up to you guys. Cordell Stewart, you heard Mark, a slight injury, but no stay in this game. Right now, Baylor has the ball. First and 10 from its own 20. Joe, complete. Incomplete. It would have been complete if the receiver didn't get his bell rung. The intended receiver was Mike McKenzie, and Ronnie Bradford just leveled him. Well, good job of disguising the coverage as McKenzie will come right to left across the screen. He thinks it's man-to-man -man coverage as Dwayne Davis jumps on the route. What he didn't know was that Ronnie Bradford on the right corner had simply played zone and was sitting there waiting for him to come to his house. That's a headache. Second and ten. The give to the first man through. Gain of three yards. It's Bradford Lewis carrying the ball. His first carry of the afternoon, a young man from Waco. Total yards so far, the Buffs with almost 100 more than Baylor. That's reflected in the score, CU leading it 10 to three. Eight and a half minutes to go, second quarter. Third and seven. Almost intercepted by Chad Brown. And again, when you get option quarterbacks in must-throw situations, sometimes they make throws they don't want to. And Chad Brown will undercut the out route of Mike McKenzie, had to go right through his hands. In his defense, however, keep in mind, he's playing with that cast on his hand. It's going to be tough to catch a ball thrown that hard with only one good hand. Brett Delaney to punt. Deion figures to receive. He lets it bounce again. And again, a nice bounce for CU. Goes out of bounds at the Buffs 43-yard line. 
been a slow second quarter because of all the penalty flags. We still have 8.13 to go. You can get the analysis of today's game from the coach himself tomorrow night on the Bill McCartney Show. We'll bring you all the highlights of today's game as well as introduce you to a special CU student athlete. Join Dave Logan and Coach McCartney as they analyze what worked and what might not have been today's game as well as take a look ahead to next week's game against the Minnesota Golden Gophers. That's the Bill McCartney Show Sunday nights at 1035 immediately following the News 4 Late Edition right here on News 4, the home of the CU Bucks. First and 10 from the 43. Stewart complete to Levon Warren. And down to the Baylor 36. Levon Warren once again lining up as a receiver, not at his usual position in the backfield. I talked about his ability to catch the football. Lamont Warren gives Cordell Stewart yet another big body. Good size, 195 pounds worth. Coming across the delay route. Receivers clear up field. Here he comes, and now it's just like a running play. You've got your best running back into the secondary with the football. First down, four wide receivers in. Three of them to Cordell Stewart's left. And he goes to the tight end, Fourier. Penalty flags down. And I think Christian Fourier might get called for offensive pass interference on this one. Let's see. That's exactly what it was. Fourier, the tight end, just bouncing off Chris Lewis. Might have been Tim Spencer. Those arms, once they extend, you usually get called for that. Fourier will be the left side of the screen. Can't see it from that spot. Made a nice catch. Too bad it won't count. You can push off, but receivers, the smart ones, push off with their arms below their waist. You rarely get called if you do that. Once those arms come above the waist and they see contact between your arm and the chest of the defender, they usually call it. Cordell Stewart having a pretty good day. Just two incomplete passes and 13 attempts. And a touchdown. That last penalty pushes the Buffs back into their own territory at the 49. Brings up second and 25. Complete to Westbrook. He gets inside the Baylor 35, but short of the first down. He's got about eight yards to go for the first. I'll tell you what, I'm most taken by the accuracy of the throw. Robbie Burleson has pretty good coverage on Westbrook. Watch where the ball comes in. I mean, you don't have to do much as a receiver. Just get open a little bit. And Cordell Stewart has been so very accurate in two weeks. Third and eight for CU. The blitz. Stewart going deep. It's going to be a jump ball. Charles Johnson, touchdown! Well, we saw it last week against CSU. And the more Cordell Stewart sees this happen, the more times he's going to give Charles Johnson an opportunity to just go up for a jump ball. And Charles Johnson jumps completely over Chris Lewis, number 18. You'll see pretty good coverage. Now watch the leap, the extension in the air. I'll tell you what. That's a great job of getting up over Keith Caldwell, number three. Well, we saw Charlie Johnson do that last week against CSU. Went high in the air, grabbed a jump ball similar to that, and then ran the ball in from about 30 yards out. Pat Blotto, the extra point. Got it. And CU ups its lead to 17 to 3. A large contingent of Buffalo fans here who live in the area. They're happy about that score. We've got 647 to go, first half. To make this play possible, watch the block Lamont Warren, number 12, will put on Lachey Maston. Bam! That's the way to pick up a blitz right there. The throw by Stewart, giving his receiver a chance. Charles Johnson over the top of Michael McFarland. Johnson has just had a knack of getting his body above the secondary player. And actually, if you get your body on top of the corner, he almost propels you into the air. Well, you know what CJ stands for. Can jump. And he's shown us that twice in the last...
couple of weeks. CU kicking off with a 17-3 lead. And again, Baylor, no shot at a return. Boy, Berger just keeps putting it further and further beyond the end zone. Well, let's take a look at some other scores around the country. That's always a good matchup. Notre Dame and Michigan. And the Irish lead at 7-0 in the second quarter. We'll keep you abreast of that one throughout the afternoon. Baylor really has to feel a sense of urgency here in this drive. They've got to get some points on the board and keep their defense off the field. So far, offensively, they've been able to get off the goal. First and 10 from their own 20. Nothing there either. A loss of three yards. Mims on the carry. Wolf forked the tackle. Chad Brown also in there. The Bears last year had five senior offensive linemen. They've been replaced by a couple of sophomores, a freshman, and two juniors. And until you play together, until you establish really a cohesive unit, little things break down and botches the whole play up. And they have all their skill position players back, running backs, receivers, quarterback. Whole new offensive line. Second and 13. Joe overthrows his man, Marvin Callis. That'll bring up third and long. 5.55 to go, second quarter. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan with you in Waco, Texas. Floyd Casey Stadium on the campus of Baylor University. Let's go down to the sideline. We brought another gentleman with us, Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thank you, Les. You know, the, the Buffs have... Ralphie, the Buffalo, well, the Baylor Bears have Reed, the Bear, a seven-month North American Black Bear. They keep him till he's about two years old, then they donate the Bears to a zoo or wildlife refuge. Back up you guys. J.J. Joe from his own end zone gets rid of the ball. If he didn't, it would have been a safety. I don't see any flags on the what, field. No it, has, it has to be a safety now because I think it's going to be intentional grounding, and he was in the end zone, which has to be. There's the call. It's got to be a safety. There is a flag back in the end zone. If you make that call, which I think, yes, it is, intentional grounding, and the quarterback is in the end zone when the call is made, it's two points for the defense. And there was nobody out here for J.J. Joe to throw it to. He rolls away. Marcellus Elder will pressure him initially. You can see J.J. Joe right now knows that Ronnie Wolfork is there as well. And he let that ball go with not a green jersey within 20 yards of it. Well, we're even on intentional grounding calls. The one against CU probably should never have happened. The one against Baylor, very costly. Because the Buffs get two points out of that for a safety. And I think, again, this is simply a case where J.J. Joe and the Baylor offense trying to make something happen that is completely out of character for the team. They can't get the running game going, and thus they're having to throw the ball way too much, and they're throwing it in must-pass situations. Elder forces J.J. Joe right into Ronnie Wolfork, and you can see the ball is gone. Also a pretty good job by Greg Jones, a freshman linebacker, out of Kennedy, coming from the right side. All right, so the Buffs get two points on that play. They lead 19-3 to now, and Baylor has a free kick. They can do it any way they want. Some teams like to punt it from this situation. Other teams like to put it on the tee, and Baylor right now is putting it on the tee. Mike Shilton will kick it off. I think the problem with punting here is they're kicking into a pretty good win. Eric Mitchell is the man deep for CU to receive the kick, and he's back at his own 25. Takes it from the 21. And good blocking up the middle, across midfield. And down at the 46-yard line. Eric Mitchell with a very nice return for CU. 33 yards. Well, this little guy is dangerous, and before the season is done, he will break a kickoff for a touchdown. Has great speed. Probably the fastest CU buff, and it doesn't take much for him to squeeze through the hole. I'm going to mark down you said that. Putting the pressure on Eric Mitchell to return a kickoff this year. He can fly. He sure can. He runs a 4-3, 40-yard dash. 
Can't get much faster than that. First down from the Baylor 46. Stewart, wide open. Ray Carruth brought down at the 30. And you might be able to hear the boos from the Baylor fans. Well, they're upset because Colorado able to move the football, but again, to the Baylor defense, I, I think the Bears are very, uh, or, or unusually, or unusual to see this kind of offense, I should say. And Baylor's not a team that can play pass defense against great passing offenses. Right now, Colorado is throwing the ball every which way. The Buffs with a first down at the Baylor 30. More flags. Looked like somebody on the CU offensive line move. Procedure penalty against the Buffs. That'll cost them five yards. And push them back to the Baylor 35. Right side of your screen, Roger Ivey, along with Derek West, both jump. And that really, penalty is the only thing that has stopped Colorado here this afternoon. Cordell Stewart. First and 15 for the Buffs. Great catch by Christian Fourier. He really had to reach for that one down at the 26-yard line. And Robbie Burleson on coverage again. Really pretty good coverage. Cordell Stewart puts this ball the only place he can. That's away from Burleson and to the outside of Fourier. That's a fine catch from a tight end option. Fourier had three catches last week. He's got that many today already. And we've got 420 to go still in the second quarter. James Hill, normally a running back, is lined up at wide receiver for the Buffs now. Michael Westbrook, surprised by the pass, still makes the catch and gets down to the 12-yard line. Another Buffs first down. Baylor again on the blitz. Cordell Stewart picks it up. The ball is gone, and if you're a receiver, you better get your head turned around quickly as well. Michael Westbrook in the slot. He sees the blitz. The head's got to come around. The ball's already gone. What a great adjustment. Makes a good move on Chris Lewis, and Westbrook is an excellent runner after the catch. Well, that's a quarterback who sees the blitz. That ball is going to be gone. Westbrook realizes that the blitz is on. He's got to cut his route to the outside, and then the athletic ability takes over. First down for the Buffs at the Baylor's 12-yard line. And again, a lot of jumping on the line. <laughs> It looked like the uh, Tulane Green Wave coming across. Well, Steve Strahan was in the backfield, and Michael Westbrook in motion ran into it. Penalty goes against Baylor. It's offsides. You know that something is wrong when you're the man in motion running behind the quarterback, and before the ball is snapped, you run into a defensive tackle. Hey, you're not supposed to be in here. But if he's there, hit him anyway. When in doubt, hit someone. That's right. Grant Taft watching his team fall apart right here. First and five. James Hill. Will he get in? Just short. Just short of the goal line. That's a first down for the Buffs. At the one-yard line of Baylor. We told you last week, James Hill was afraid with this new one-back offense, his position fullback wouldn't be needed anymore. But Phil McCartney is, do is doing a good job shuffling Hill and Lamont Warren back and forth. Hill's getting a lot of action. First and goal from the one. Lamont Warren goes in for the score. And the Buffs beginning to blow him out. Good job by James Hill leading Lamont Warren into the hole. That's the old fullback sticking his nose in there and knocking something green out of the way, and Lamont Warren easily into the end zone. And there are a lot of CU fans here today. Got a big uh, get-together before the game. 
black and gold tents everywhere. For a second, I thought I was in the state of Colorado. The extra point is good from Blotto. And the Buffs have been Bafo. 26 to 3, they lead Baylor on Baylor's home field. You see Grant Taft with the headset on. He's trying to figure how they can get this offense going against a team that he admitted this week has more talent than the Bears do. When you're an option attack, though, you fall way behind. It's really extremely tough to get back in it. You become impatient and you can't stay with what you do best, and that's running the football. Well, let's switch gears to the NFL now. The Broncos play on News 4, and that means the Dan Reeves show this Monday night for a complete inside look at the Broncos game being played tomorrow against San Diego. Dan will let you in on the latest from Broncos headquarters. You might remember last week on the show, he broke the story about the team cutting defensive end Warren Powers. Also this week, a special appearance by one of the great all-around athletes in history. Plus, we live a great moment in Broncos history with distant replay. It's all on the Dan Reeves Show this Monday night at 6.30, right here on News 4, the home of the Denver Broncos. Who's one of the great all-around athletes in history? History of what? Jim Thorpe. He's going to be there? You think so? You are quite a man if he shows. <laughs> We're holding a seance. Yes. No, actually, I don't know. I'm going to be as surprised as everybody on Monday night. The bus Mitch Berger kicking off. Will Baylor have a chance to return this one? No. Not even close. On the last scoring drive for CU, went five plays, 46 yards, and they chewed up three minutes. Dave, they've scored almost every way possible so far. Touchdown pass, touchdown run, safety, a 50-yard field goal from Platt Bo Pat Blotto. And really, Baylor defensively, again, they have not stopped Colorado all day. Penalties have hurt a bit, but I'm sure Bill McCartney is pleased with the overall performance and the fact that when well, they've had opportunities here in the first half, they've taken advantage. 2.46 to go in the first half. Baylor starts with it at its own 20. <laughs> Intended for David Mims. That pass off the mark, however. Chris Hudson on the coverage. I tell you, that's a case of just not wanting the football and wanting to take care of your body instead of really laying out and trying to make the catch. David Mims had a chance to catch that ball, but saw Chris Hudson out of the corner of his eye and gave it up. The receiver, receivers for Baylor have been open over the middle all afternoon. Not a stellar afternoon so far for J.J. Garrett. Randell Jackson on the carry. He gets four yards. John Katasic, the tackle. Katasic, the junior linebacker out of Corona Del Mar, California. Didn't play last year because of an knee injury. Join News 4's Gary Miller and catch the beat. Broncos beat tonight at 6.30. Gary will preview tomorrow's game against the Chargers, as well as bring you some very special features and interviews. That's Broncos beat tonight at 6.30, right here on News 4, the home of the Denver Broncos. There's a look at downtown Waco. And if things keep up the way they are, a lot of folks will be headed there. Very soon. 26 to 3. See you leads Baylor. Oh, with as many empty seats as there are in this stadium today, I think a lot of folks are there already. to go second quarter it's third and five for Baylor and a little confusion in the backfield right now JJ Joe directing traffic
Almost picked off again by Chris Hudson. Well, we've talked a lot about Cordell Stewart and where he places the football. This is a throw that is behind Jackson, the running back, and Chris Hudson will make a break on the ball and almost pick it off and score. Baylor has to punt. Rhett Delaney will do it. Deion figures to receive it back in his own 40. A short one, and that goes out of bounds at the CU 48-yard line. So the Buffs get it in decent field position again. We've got 2.17 to go, first half. Buffs lead it 26-3. You know, since 1989, these are your top Division I programs in the nation. Miami of Florida, the national champ last year, is 34-3 and three over the last three seasons. A newcomer to the WAC, Fresno State is next, and then the CU Buffs with a winning percentage of 84.2%. Not bad. First down for the Buffs at their own 48. Westbrook. Inside the 35. He could go all the way. Touchdown, CU. Well, this is the same play the series before where Westbrook turned around and had the ball almost stick on his hip. It's a side adjustment. The blitz will come. Stewart sees it. Westbrook will break his route to the outside. Now, Chris Lewis, the free safety, you'll see he's got to make this tackle. He slows down for a second and almost gives up on the play. And Westbrook is down the sideline for a 52-yard touchdown reception. Boy, did he turn it on there around the corner or what? Lotto, the extra point. Now we've got a route. Still in the first half. And CU leads it 33 to 3. So if you're going to blitz a team that can pick up blitzes and throw the football, you got to get your free safety closer to the side adjust man. In this case, Michael Westbrook. Right side of your screen, you'll see the blitz come. So does Stewart. He's unblocked. The ball is gone. Look how far Chris Lewis has to run and then stops as Michael Westbrook just turns it up the field. You, you simply can't play past defense like that. Too easy. Hi, this is very, very surprising to a lot of people. The CU cheerleaders will be tired by the end of the day. They do push-ups for every point scored. But this was surprising to a lot of people who felt you go down into Southwest Conference territory Baylor University, a team that went 8-3 and three in the regular season and went to the Copper Bowl last year. And it's not supposed to be this easy. You're right, and give Colorado credit for that. They've come out and executed their offense, but let's also be realistic. That's a very poor job of playing pass defense, and there are a lot of teams in similar circumstances that would score and score a lot of points. Mitch Berger to kick off. And a trio of Bears back to receive it. He's going to take it out. Not a bad move to the 23-yard line. When Brandel Jackson. He paid for it, too. He comes up limping. He was about five yards deep in his own end zone. A return of 28 yards. Well, Baylor needed a spark. Maybe that's what Brandell Jackson was trying to do. Say, Baylor needs a full-fledged fire. <laughs> Those big forest fires. J.J. Joe ducks under one man. Gets the pass off, but incomplete. Intended receiver was Reggie Miller. And Rich Fisher, with some good pressure on J.J. Joe, might have rushed that throw. 
on the last scoring drive for CU. They only needed one play and 13 seconds. Cordell Stewart hooking up with Michael Westbrook, that man right there. Joe gets three yards. Ronnie Wolf fork the tackle. Again, the problem with falling so far behind, that's what Baylor does best, run the option. And they got about three and a half yards in the quarterback keep. That's fine. That keeps you in business if you're in the game. But when you're 30 points behind, obviously you want to throw the ball. You've got a tendency to rush everything, and you get completely out of your character. Well, it'd be hard for Grant Taft to preach patience right now, being down by 30. But you can't throw it every down. Or can you? Third and seven. Whistle stops play. Penalty flags down. Baylor might have taken too much time to get that playoff. You want to be patient, but not that patient. Mark off five yards against the Bears. They're back at their 20, where they started. A couple of scores from the Big 8 for you. Iowa State losing to Iowa of the Big Ten, the big interstate rivalry there, 14 to seven Hawkeyes. And West Virginia leading Pitt in the fourth, 30 to six. Third and 12. Deep over the middle, complete to Mims. Chris Hudson, the only man with a chance, but he won't get him. David Mims takes the lollipop from J.J. Joe and goes all the way for the score. Well, J.J. Joe put some air under that football, and I think because of the height of the pass, he fooled the buff secondary. Mims, in the right side, runs a, just a quick post, and you can see just a horrible angle taken, I think, by Dwayne Davis. Hudson expecting help in the middle of the field. Davis expecting the ball to be thrown on a line, not lofted over his head. And Bailey with their first touchdown of the afternoon. Trey Ware, the extra point. He's got it. So Baylor, with that spark we were talking about, but still down 33 to 10 to the CU Buffs. Fifty-one seconds to go in the second quarter. There's the man that just caught it. J.J. Joe has seen a lot of white jerseys most of the afternoon. Leonard Renfro knocking J.J. Joe down, but I'm sure Joe doesn't care on this throw. Tough to see as to who was playing free safety there, but he thought the ball was going to be thrown on a line. I think it was Greg Lindsay and the ball was lofted over his head. When you're playing in the middle of the field, as they say, you gotta be deeper than the deepest. David Mims, he's not big, but he certainly came up with a big play there. All Southwestern Conference running back last year. So Baylor to kick off with 51 seconds to go, first half. And the deep man for CU is Eric Mitchell. Ground ball picked up by T.J. Cunningham and across the 30-yard line. And last scoring drive for Baylor went three plays and 80 yards. Let's see if the Buffs come out throwing now with 44 seconds to go. At their own 32-yard line. Playing quarterback for the Buffs now will be Duke Tobin. Cordell Stewart will get a breather right before half. The 
is James Hill. On the fumble. Looks like CU recovered. So the Buffs will keep the ball. James Hill with a nice cutback, and then as he tries to get into the hole quickly, the ball is just knocked out of his hands. Good play by Keith Caldwell. He'll gain six yards on that play. But that's the end of the half. And the Buffs doing a number on Baylor, 33 to 10. Let's go to the sideline, Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thank you very much, Les. You know, the Buffs started in the first half making mistakes, not playing with a lot of emotion. Here's Bill McCartney. Bill, if we could get you to turn around and face the press box. I know the end of the first half, you gave up that touchdown, but there for a while, you guys were hitting on all cylinders. Well, we're probably not going to be able to play Cordell anymore. And uh, so I don't feel like the game's over. Uh, they can score that quick on us. They dropped a touchdown pass earlier. Uh, there's some good things that we can build on, but this game's not over. Your defense struggled a little last week, but they've been playing pretty tough outside that touchdown pass. Yeah, I think our defense played well, except for both of those touchdown passes. The one they dropped and the one they caught. He had some two back going there. Down near the goal line, you had your two backs in there. Is that to solve the short yardage situation? We'll see. Bill McCartney, he's got a big lead. He thinks the game's not over yet, but uh, I can guarantee you along the sideline, the guys are already starting to celebrate a little bit. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Mark. Mac mentioned Cordell Stewart not playing anymore this afternoon. Earlier in the game, he suffered a sprained foot. We'll see how he is second half. Right now, the Buffs lead it 33 to 10, going into the locker room. CU fans in the stands at Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco, Texas. Got to be happy about this one. The Buffs lead at 33 to 10. Bill McCartney is going to have a new quarterback to start the second half in Duke Tobin because Cordell Stewart has a sprained foot, although he says if this game were to get close, Cordell Stewart might be able to come back and play in the second half. Let's take a look at some highlights from that first half, Dave. Well, it looked like it might be close to start with. CU turned the football over on the second offensive play, fumbled, and Baylor dropping a sure touchdown by Melvin Bonner had to settle for a field goal, and they had an early 3-0 lead. But the Buffs would come back. The offense has been terrific this afternoon. The play action fake to Lamont Warren. Cordell Stewart pulls up, finds a wide-open Christian Fourier who makes a nice adjustment on the ball. At that time, CU would have the lead that they have yet to surrender. The first of quite a few CU scores on the afternoon. Michael Westbrook also caught a touchdown pass and went 52 yards. Pat Blotto, a 50-yard field goal, the longest of his college career. And right now the Buffs getting ready to kick off. Mitch Berger with that duty. And the deep man for Baylor is Brandel Jackson. Five kickoffs this afternoon for Berger and only one has had a chance to be returned. And that one was taken five yards deep in the end zone. No chance here. So Baylor will start at its own 20. Halftime stats for you. The Buffs annihilating Baylor in the first down category, 14 to two. Same thing with rushing Baylor with just seven yards on the ground. More than twice as many yards passing and total yards, almost three times as many. Baylor with J.J. Joe at quarterback. First down from its own 20. The pitch to Mims, and he gets nine yards out of that play. Chad Brown the tackle. And I think if Baylor's going to get back in this, that's the kind of play they've got to stick with. This is an option football team. 
because they got so far behind, they were forced to throw the football 13 times in the first half. They'd like to throw the ball between 13 and 17 times for the game. I think you'll see Baylor come out and really try to get that option going and sneak back in this game and also keep their offense in the field. Second and one. This is the fullback, Robert Stray. He hasn't gotten much work today, but he got the first down there. Buffs have done a good job of taking him out of the offense. Well, he's a guy you better take out, 260 pounds. Robert Strait can move the pile. Here's a good job, however, by Jeff Bruner sliding off the block of Chuck Pope in the hat on Mr. Strait. Now, if you give Mims and Strait and J.J. Joe the opportunity to run the ball throughout the game, they can hurt you. They call it their thunder and lightning running attack. So far, it's... Been hardly a storm today. Notre Dame and Michigan tied at seven. And on the first down play, this is straight again for a couple of yards. That'll bring up second and eight. CU sideline, a lot of helmets off there because it's so hot on that artificial turf. At game time, 67% humidity. Joe going deep again, complete again. And finally, Chris Hudson brings him down at the 15-yard line. That receiver was Reggie Miller, the senior out of Waco. Well, when you have success running the ball a little bit, you can play action. And Miller gets inside Ronnie Bradford. And again, you see a safety, in this case, Chris Hudson, who undercuts the throw. That's a bad angle taken by Chris Hudson. You expect the ball to be thrown on the line, a quick post, when it's lofted with air underneath the ball, it sometimes fools you. And both Hudson this half and last half, Greg Lindsay, I think, were fooled by the trajectory of the football. Robert Strait, straight ahead for a yard. Greg Beekert brought him down. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan with you at the beginning of the third quarter in Waco. See you led at the half, 33 to 10. Baylor making a little noise here, though. There's a score from the Air Force Academy. The Falcons tied with Hawaii, 3-3. Three, three. Second and nine. Joe on the keeper. Inside oh. the 10. Wrestled down at the eight-yard line by Dwayne Davis. That's the luxury of having a free safety at 6'2", at 205 pounds. We told you that most option games, the free safety is locked on the quarterback. And Dwayne Davis, you see him running from the left side of your screen, J.J. Joe is his man. And up around the neck goes Dwayne Davis. Dwayne with his first game back from a broken arm. Didn't hesitate to use the arms there to bring down the back. It's third and two. Robert Strait stood up by Greg Beekert at the five-yard line. Very close to the first down. It's going to depend on the placement. There's no doubt here, even if they're shy, what Baylor will do. And they're not shy. At least it doesn't look like it. It looks from here like they may have the first down. You're right. They're moving the chains. So it's first and goal from the five. And maybe Bill McCartney wasn't just jiving us. Baylor might not be out of this one yet. Straight. Touchdown, Baylor. A right, few buffs had a shot, but nobody brought him down. Well, when you've got a horse, you might as well ride it. Robert Straight at 260 pounds. Watch the strength there. He is met right in the hole. Stop there. 
by Chad, uh, excuse me, Greg Binker and a host of buffs, and it's strong enough to continue to keep his legs working and kind of grind himself into the end zone. Trey Ware in for the extra point. And we do have ourselves a ball game. Baylor with two quick scores, one at the end of the half, one to begin the second half, and the Buffs lead down to 33-17. Robert Strait is a fullback, number 20 in a three-point stance. He gets into the line, you can see, Greg Beaker meets him about the three-yard line. Deion Figures comes and actually almost knocks Beaker off the tackle. But straight with tremendous power and size, able to get into the end zone. Seven plays and 80 yards took the Bears four minutes. And, well, that's what the doctor ordered for Grant Taft's crew. Oh, baby, it's all. We're coming back. Baylor oh. seemingly back in it now. Little spirit on that Bears sideline. The Buffs lead at 33-17. We've got 11 minutes to go, third quarter. And Baylor kicking off. The deep man is Eric Mitchell from his own 15. And a return of 21 yards. Eric gets it to the 36. Colorado's been hurt a couple of times this afternoon. One, an 80-yard touchdown throw. And this on the drive. Bradford lets Miller get inside. But watch where Chris Hudson approaches this route. See, he undercuts the route. He's got to be on the top side of Miller. And that way the catch is not made. Hudson anticipates the throw being on line, a quick throw, and the ball was up in the air and over his head. Buffs with the ball. First down, they're on 36. Lamont Warren. One yard. Couple of other big eight scores for you. Nebraska leading Middle Tennessee State 14 to 7 in the second quarter. And Oklahoma doing a number of Ar on Arkansas State 13 to nothing in the second quarter. That Arkansas State team now coached by former Tampa Bay Bucks and New York Giants head coach Ray Perkins. Second and nine. Duke Tobin in a quarterback for CU. First down yardage across midfield. He's marked out at the 50. So Tobin, the junior out of Arlington Heights, Illinois, shows a little fancy footwork there. And Duke has watched this game long enough to know that, hey, if you don't like something downfield, make something happen with your feet. This looks a little bit like Cordell Stewart. Tobin with enough speed to turn the corner before he gets knocked out of bounds. He's a transfer from the University of Illinois with great football bloodlines. We'll get into that in a second. Meantime, first down for CU in midfield. James Hill, a second effort, nets him a couple of extra yards. Let's go to the sideline and Mark McIntosh. Right now, he is sitting on the artificial surface here. It looks like he's got a cramp in his left leg. We'll go over there and try to check it out and give you more later. Thanks, Mark. And Dave, that's not unusual in heat like this to cramp up. It's really not. The key is what you do after you cramp up. Sometimes it's so painful, you think you've got rid of the cramp, you come back and start to run, and that thing just, like, bites you. Knocks you right in the back of the leg. And they are painful, too. Second and eight at the Baylor 48. Tobin complete to the tight end Fourier and another first down for CU down to the 36. Boy, Fourier is really coming on. Well, he's a terrific pass receiver from the tight end position. This is a good throw by Duke Tobin. They've been able to run this route because Baylor does not play head up on the tight end. You can see Fourier able to release the line of scrimmage cleanly. He's into the secondary running simple out cuts against zone defenses. And the more they use the tight end, I think, the more CU will see people lined up right on his head. First down for CU at the Baylor 36. Tobin incomplete. Intended for Charles Johnson, who just couldn't quite find the handle.
unusual for CJ last week against CSU 159 yards receiving it was the second best yardage day ever at CU Walter Stanley before him CJ on a delay just comes underneath two receivers and just took his eye off the football that's gonna happen second and ten Open over the middle. That's Westbrook complete between three Baylor Bears and inside the Baylor 10-yard line. Boy, another good throw by Duke Tobin. The reason this pass is successful, however, aside from the nice throw, is that Michael Westbrook at 210 pounds can withstand the collision right when he catches the ball. That's a big body you can see from the right corner. On Andrew Swayze comes, tries to separate the ball from Westbrook. Once he gets his hands on it there, he's got the body size and strength to really take punishment and yet hang on. You want big receivers running down the middle of the field. Six catches for him today, seven last week against CSU. First and goal from the line. That's Lamont Warren. Evidently the cramp went away, but the Baylor Bears wouldn't. And he's thrown for a loss of four yards. There's a final for you from Pittsburgh, West Virginia. Doing a number on Pitt, 44 to 6. Second and goal from the 14. Good rush. And Tobin is sacked back at the 22. Albert Fontenot wrapped him up. Well, this will be the one area that Duke Tobin will not be as good as Cordell Stewart. He doesn't have the ability to escape quite as quickly, nor is he as big and strong. Stewart may have pulled out of the grasp of Albert Fontenot, but Tobin unable to. He did a smart thing, however, didn't throw the ball, didn't force it. They can line up and run third down. Fontenot very quick. We talked about him a lot. Not blocked for long. Third and goal from the 22. The draw to Warren. A nice move to get down to the 11. But the Buffs still 11 yards short of the goal line and the touchdown. And they'll bring on the field goal unit. Good idea just to get you closer for three. And Lamont Warren stops and starts and then he glides. He's dangerous once he gets into the secondary. He takes a real shot on his way down. Lotto, a 28-yard field goal attempt. Set up by that Lamont Warren uh, uh, run. And Blotto has it. And CU has another three points. So the Buffs lead with 6.19 to go in the third quarter is 36-17. CU running back Lamont Warren getting talked to by the training staff. Let's go down to the sideline and Mark McIntosh see what's wrong. that left leg they've also got some ice on the calf area looks like he's still having some cramping problems all right the kickoff by mitch berger bounced before the end zone but ended up going through the back anyway so baylor in familiar territory starting at its own 20 that last scoring drive for the buffs 10 plays they ate up four minutes and 36 seconds culminating in a lotto 28 yard field goal and the Buffs lead it, consequently, 36-17. Next week, CU is on the road again. In the Metrodome to play the Minnesota Golden Gophers of the Big Ten. First down, Baylor. Up the middle for four yards. Jeff There's Bruner, a, I think, is yeah. left. Player down on the field. You're right, it is Bruner, the nose tackle.
junior out of Sterling High School in Colorado. Oh, boy. He is in a lot of pain, too. When you play nose, you get it from a lot of different directions. The right side of the screen, where the left leg gets bent back by the pile. And that doesn't look good. And that looks even worse, Bruner being helped off the field. And he's not putting any weight on that left leg. He's a guy that played so well last year when Joel Steed was an all Big 8 nose tackle. Bruner played almost half of the time and they didn't lose much on defense when he was in the game. Second and seven for Baylor. Sam Rogers in the game now for CU at nose tackle. Joe wants it long. Has his man. Into CU territory and brought down at the 33. The pass receiver is Melvin Bonner. Well, same kind of play that Williams caught before. Play action fake. And you can see the free safety. Dwayne Davis gets sucked up on the fake, and Bonner able to get behind Ronnie Bradford. Actually, not too bad a coverage. That's not Bradford. Baylor with a first down at the CU 35. We've got 5.28 to go, third quarter. And with a good second effort is Bradford Lewis, another Baylor fullback. Another Waco kid, Katasic the tackle. Grant Taft roaming the sideline for Baylor. Colorado State looks like the Rams are leaving their record at one and one. Their first home game against Idaho, and they lead it comfortably, 28-7. Second and seven for Baylor. That play busted. J.J. Joe held on. It'll be a loss of two. Joe just got knocked off his feet, I think, by his fullback. Baylor's hit a couple of long throws, again, very similar patterns. When you get caught trying to play the option attack sometimes, you're very short in the secondary. See Joe had his foot stepped on, I think, by Chuck Pope. And now more confusion on the offensive line, and J.J. Joe calls a timeout. They wasted a couple of timeouts in the first half in this manner. Can't afford to do that when you're down 36 to 17, and that's where Baylor finds itself right now. The CU mascot chips is the smartest one of all of us. On the sideline. Look at his head in there. Take off those horns if he gets too close. Yeah, take off the top of his noggin, too. Buffs lead it, 36-17. 4.06 to go, third quarter. And Baylor with the ball at the CU 33-yard line. It's third and eight. The quick pass is complete. Gotta go for a touchdown. Melvin Bonner. Well, I don't know how many times we've said it today, but poor coverage in the secondary. Bonner able to get inside of Deion Figures. Watch where Chris Hudson, the free safety, Chris Hudson should knock out Melvin Bonner. And there should be a collision right there, and Bonner should be picking himself off the floor. But Hudson with a bad angle, figures allowing Bonner to get inside, and every time Baylor, it looks like the Bears are out of it, they answer. And I guarantee you, Mike Hankowitz, the defensive coordinator, Greg Brown, the secondary coach, and Bill McCartney, the head coach, are not happy. Gray Ware. The extra point is good. 
Bill McCartney's buffs are watching this lead disintegrate. Again, Melvin Bonner for the right side will run a slam header. The free safety in the middle of the field makes a cut to the ball. You can see he's got to hit Bonner right in the mouth. And Hudson, again, undercuts the throw. And Melvin Bonner is in the end zone. He dropped a sure touchdown pass in the first quarter. Bonner's a good one. All Southwest Conference last year, 34 catches. And today he's hurting the Buffs. At one point, CU had a 30-point lead. They were up 33-3. to And now that lead is 12 points with a lot of time left. 3.59 to go in the third quarter. Basically, that's the only play that Baylor's been able to hurt CU with. If you hit that receiver and knock him down one time, they tend not to want to come in there the next three or four times. But CU at safety really in pass defense only have not played well this afternoon. That last Baylor scoring drive went five plays, 80 yards. Melvin Bonner, the touchdown reception. Dave, is that a case of a young free safety maybe looking for the interception instead of playing the ball where it should be played? No, I, I don't think he's looking for the interception at all. I, 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 the only thing I can attribute it to is the option game. Your safeties have to get involved in run support, and sometimes with one or two false steps, it puts you in bad position. Line drive kickoff. That's T.J. Cunningham to the 32. Cunningham, the redshirt freshman out of Overland High School in Aurora. He's a fast one. That's where we stand in Waco on a muggy day. Quarterback for the Buffs remains Duke Tobin. Cordell Stewart on the sideline with a sprained foot. Pass dropped by Westbrook, a little behind him. And I think this is just a case with a second team quarterback not used to first team receivers. The ball a little bit behind Michael Westbrook, who should have made that catch, but. Cordell Stewart, of course, the first half, right on the money with most of his throws. Mark McIntosh has something for us. Mark? I'm Jeff Brunner. He has indeed injured the anterior cruciate ligament in the left knee. According to Dave Burton, surgery is a likelihood. Back up you guys. Boy, what a shame. Jeff Brunner, the starting nose tackle for CU, hurt a few minutes ago. This time, Westbrook complete. A couple of yards short of the first down. Westbrook in the slot, second receiver from the sideline. Again, against the zone coverage, down and out, you force that linebacker to run a long way to make the tackle. Seven catches, 132 yards. He's going to break, if he stays healthy and in school, he's going to break every receiving record in the books of Colorado football. He went over 100 yards last week. 130 against CSU, and now we have a Baylor player on the field. Let's talk about that CU injury, however. Jeff Bruner with a bad knee came out a few plays ago. Sam Rogers will probably move into the starting lineup. He moved into Bruner's place this afternoon. I'll tell you, that's a, a horrible, horrible feeling when you lay there and you know that you're seriously injured and what a darn thing you can do about it. And although your teammates will provide solace, there you think of a million things. Your career what you'll do if you can't come back. Why did it have to happen to me? And the man leaning over him there was Darius Holland, the sophomore out of Las Cruces, New Mexico. The bus were considering redshirting him. He's a backup nose tackle. Now he might not be able to redshirt. The Buffs might need him to play this year. Well, the Sooners 
Still doing it to Arkansas State. 21 0 in the second quarter. Right here, Buffs with the ball. Third and one from their own 40. Lamont Warren has the first down and a couple more. I'll tell you what, in the game that CU apparently has had control of from the start, that's a big first down. If you give it up there, have to punt the football. Baylor is 12 points behind with still time left in the third quarter. And offensively, they've been able to really generate some movement here in the second half. So CU offensively wants to stay on the field. First down from their own 44. Good rush. Tobin drops it. Looks like he got it back, however. And loses two yards in the process. A Baylor player comes out of the pile with the ball. And now the Bears are trying to explain to the official how they recover the fumble. Let's see if the official buys it. Well, Duke Tobin, back in the pocket, will have the ball stripped by Albert Fontenot. That thing is loose. And Tobin, we thought, got on it initially. You can see right there that he had it, and that's what the, official, uh, the officiating crew will say. So the Buffs keep it. I think Bill McCartney would like them to hurry up because there are seven seconds left on the snap clock. Second and 12. Tobin with a wobbler, but it's complete to Westbrook. Very close to the first down. That's well, a good throw by Duke Tobin. This one is on the money. The last time he tried to hit this pattern on the other side of the field, the ball was behind Michael Westbrook. This thing got there in a hurry and is right on the money. That's where a receiver would like to catch it. And that pattern has been open all day long. We just got the call. First down, CU. They're at the Baylor 46. Duke Tobin stats right there. And Iowa leading Iowa State in the fourth quarter. For what it's worth, Dave, Coy Detmer, the freshman out of Texas for CU, on the sideline, warming up. Lamont Warren. First down yardage, down to the 32 of Baylor. The penalty flag on the field. And that penalty, I think, is on Michael Westbrook, who was trying to block in the slot. Westbrook's had himself a heck of a day. Receivers that play at Colorado have to do a lot of things. Now they're going to have to catch the ball before they had to block downfield a lot. Baylor, of course, will take this penalty after the long Lamont Warren run, and that'll push the Buffs back to their own 45. You'll see Michael Westbrook again with the push. You can't put your hands in the back and you can't shove a player from behind as he did that time. First and 18. Tobin almost intercepted. Chris Lewis almost able to cradle that ball. Philip Kidd, by the way, from Westbrook was blocking on. That'll bring up second and 18 for CU. A minute 13 to go, third quarter. Buffs lead it by 12. Second and 18 with a relatively inexperienced quarterback. Good time for a draw or screen. Take the pressure off him. Short pass, the way you called it. Westbrook down to the Baylor 41. Far short of the first down, though. I tell you, I called him inexperienced, but Duke Tobin changed the play at the line of scrimmage right there. Saw the coverage that he wanted. Knew that Westbrook would be man-to-man. -man. 
Nice, easy throw, and let this guy go to work. And a good block by Charles Johnson right there. He picks off Chris Lewis, the free safety. Well, we talked earlier about Duke Tobin's football bloodlines. His father played pro ball. He's now the Chicago Bears player personnel director. And his uncle, Vince, is the Bears defensive coordinator. Third and five. Burleson can't get him. Tobin reaches for the first down and has it. Savvy play. He knew where that marker was. Uh, and a good job of holding the football long enough to let your receivers clear. Tobin just had nobody open. He stayed behind the line of scrimmage, line of scrimmage long enough to allow one of them to clear. Nobody did, and you're right. Duke Tobin knew exactly where the first down marker was. And it keeps the drive alive. This is a great chance, even though Cordell Stewart is hurt, could play, to give Duke Tobin a chance to, to step in and assume that number two spot. They want to redshirt Coy Detmer if they can, and this is going to be the number two quarterback until Vance Joseph gets healthy. Final play of the third quarter. Warren down to the 31-yard line, a gain of four. We're going to take a break, go into the final quarter with CU leading it by 12. Today's game is brought to you by Samsonite, by State Farm Insurance, and by Metro Brokers, all companies for Colorado. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan with you in Waco, Texas at Floyd Casey Stadium on the campus of Baylor University. Cordell Stewart. Normally the CU starting quarterback, not in the ball game right now. He has a sprained foot. And in his place on the field, leading the charge, leading the drive for CU right now is Duke Tobin. The Buffs are in Baylor territory at the 31-yard line. It's second and six, and the Buffs lead it 36-24. Fans here haven't had much opportunity to clap, or at least didn't in the first half when CU built a 30-point lead, but now they're back into it. Warren, two yards. Here are your stats through three quarters of play. Buff still dominating every category. But Baylor making its move. And Baylor had almost 200 yards total offense in the quarter. Two touchdowns that third quarter for the Bears. Up by two big pass plays. Third and four for CU. Wide open Westbrook. Gets away from his man. He could go in. No. Stopped at the four. But a first down for CU. First and goal from the four. Well, we've talked about this pattern a lot this afternoon, and Baylor has yet to figure out how to defense it. Just simply the outcut. It's a blitz pickup. Now, Chris Lewis. It's not Chris Lewis. That's uh, number four, Andrew Swayze. He's got to make that tackle. When you got a guy like Michael Westbrook, again, because of his size, one-on-one, -on -one, more times than not, you're going to pick up some yards. Swayze's got to tackle him by himself, and that's going to be a difficult, difficult task for anybody this year. Lamont Warren. He's in. Touchdown, CU. And a little breathing room for the Buffs. Uh, Baylor wanted a shot at staying in this ballgame. They had to stop CU there, but no go. Pretty good strength by a guy like Lamont Warren, who has hit about the three. Swayze again. He's been active the last two plays. Doesn't get any help, though, and Warren just kind of leans both of them over the end line. The extra point is good. And CU with a big lead once again, 43-24. We're going to take a break, come right back to you. A hot day in mid-Texas, and Dave, you know what that is? 
What might that be? Baylor's biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> and you yeah. need it today. Derek West doing his Lawrence of Arabia imitation. That's a wet towel on his head. When the game began, close to 70% humidity, and it feels like it's gone up some. Buffs will kick off after that last touchdown. Mitch Berger. This one a bit short against the wing from the five-yard line. That's John Henry. Up to the 28. That last scoring drive for CU. Ten plays, five minutes and two seconds. And Lamont Warren took it over. Well, Baylor has 24 points on the board, but they've really struggled on offense. In the first half, J.J. Joe completed just two of 13 passes. Much better in the third quarter, however. Again, two bombs make up most of that 122 yards in the third quarter. Right now, Baylor down by 19, so the Bears have to do something quickly if they want to make this a game. They did nothing right there. Booze from the stands, they want Baylor to put the ball in the air. Robert Strait went for no game there. Brad Taft just trying to keep CU honest. You know he's going to go to the air. It's a question of when and how much. Well, the one was right there, and I believe J.J. Joe threw a pass that hit one of the linebackers in the back. Well, the heat kind of saps you here in Texas. And Right now, so does the score. 43-24, CU leading. Third and 10. Joe again, incomplete. A good play by Dennis Collier to break up that pass. The Baylor, this afternoon, really, their entire passing game has consisted of quick slants and post patterns. That time, the last two plays, better coverage by the CU secondary, better angles by the safeties and pretty good man-to-man -man coverage by the corners. Baylor must punt. 13-01 to go, final quarter. Deion Figures will return. Figures from his own 30. And he's got a lane. into Baylor territory and down at the 40-yard line. The punter Delaney had to make the tackle. A 42-yard punt, a 30-yard return. 42 yards of the punt, but he didn't get much air underneath it. Figures had a chance to gather it in and really locate that wall. Got several good blocks and Again, Figures is a dangerous punt returner. He really helped himself next year in the NFL. He's a great cover guy at corner, but he also can bring him back for you. A lot of people consider Figures an All-American candidate at cornerback. First down for CU, Duke Tobin, the quarterback. Complete to Ray Carruth. And a pickup of four yards. You will hear a lot of Ray Carruth in the next three years. Freshman with blinding speed. Bill McCartney said, had they not changed the offense, Colorado had no chance to recruit players like Ray Carruth. 10-6 to 100 meters. And they have recruited some flyers the last couple of years. Second and six. Tobin brought down. Sacked back at the 45. And a penalty flag on the field. Gonna be offsides, Baylor. 
You are right. Maybe that's why they got to Tobin so fast. So wipe off the sack. And a lot of flags flying today. 16 penalties called all together. So the Buffs now with second down, one yard to go at the Baylor 31. Again, jumping. Well, that's going to give CU a first down. They only needed one yard. They get five out of the penalty. And without working up a sweat, the Buffs are down to the 26-yard line. No pun intended, right? As Dave fans himself. First down, CU. 11.55 to go, fourth quarter. Complete. Westbrook to the 21. A gain of five. Some updates from around the Big Eight. Missouri losing in Champaign-Urbana to the University of Illinois, 14 to nothing. That one's still early. And Michigan, that looks like a real slugfest going on. Third quarter. The Wolverines lead the Irish 10 to 7. Here we've got CU leading 43 24. And threatening again. Tobin will keep. The first down and inside the 10. To the nine yard line of Baylor. Same play we saw earlier in the first half with Cordell Stewart. This is a design quarterback draw. The fifth step. That Duke goes back. Actually, the third step, he is off and at him. And in the last five yards, he looks like he thinks he's going to get into the end zone. The head is down, the ball covered up with two arms. I mean, that's a fullback running. Quarterbacks in the NFL, they slide feet first. Quarterbacks in college, they go head first. It's because they're still young, they don't know any better. <laughs> that might be true. <laughs> first and goal from the nine. Whistle stops play. Buffs took too much time. So bring it back five yards. And you know, I can understand why things tend to shut down here in Texas between about 1 and 5 o'clock. You get a little lethargic. Very quiet in the stands right now. I'm sure it has something to do with the score, though. If lethargic is synonymous with hot, I'll go for it. <laughs> It's nothing but hot. First and goal from the 14. That pass was tipped and incomplete. Tim Spencer coming in from the defensive back position on the blitz, and he got a hand on the ball. Ten thirty-three to go, fourth quarter. Lamont Warren. Into the end zone, touchdown. While a Baylor Bear was riding him. He just didn't pull in on the reins hard enough. Nice play action fake again. Tobin freezes a couple of bears, and Lamont Warren with a good cut there and the strength just to pull away from the free safety, Chris Lewis. That's where the 10 to 12 pounds of added muscle that Warren has this year really helps. Lotto has the extra point. 
and the Buffs are putting this one away. The score in Waco, CU 50 to 24. And the one back offense, obviously with one guy back there, he's gonna be the featured back and Lamont Warren will be just that for CU this year. Makes a good cut and then enough strength that Fisher has him, but just can't quite pull him down. Chris Lewis, excuse me. And Lamont Warren in the end zone. Good cut there, the strength. Most guys will be dragged down backwards, but Lamont Warren strong enough to fall forward. Six plays and 40 yards. And Colorado leads it by 26. How did the coaches put it to you, Dave? When somebody's got a hand on you, just keep those legs pumping. And that's it. Taylor from its own five. Up to the 30. That was Brandell Jackson on the return. Let's talk about the CU offense for a second. Now, since going to the wishbone, or a variation thereof in 1985, Bill McCartney's had great success. Now he drops the wishbone or the eye bone for a passing offense, and a lot of people question that move, especially after the blockbuster when they failed so miserably to put points on the board. But now, I don't think you'll hear many detractors. Well, the blockbuster, I think what people took exception to is the fact that they didn't, he didn't really give his team a chance to do what they had proven to be best at, and that was run the football. I think Bill McCarty realized, however, that this team is going to compete for national honors year in and year out. They can't be one-dimensional. And with guys like Cordell Stewart and Lamont Warren and other offensive uh, performers, you got to throw the ball and really take advantage of athletic ability. First down for Baylor at its own 30. J.J. Joe is still the quarterback. Incomplete. In and out of the hands of the tight end, Mike McKenzie. That's Jeff Bruner, the CU starting nose tackle with ice on his knee. Jeff, can you hear us? Give a wave if you can hear us. We can't hear you because you don't have a microphone, but are you okay? Give us the okay sign if you feel. A thumbs up from Jeff Bruner. Preliminary diagnosis from the CU medical staff is a a knee injury that might need surgery. Let's hope that's not the case for Jeff. Second and 10 from the 30. Ooh. And in on him quickly is Leonard Renfro. You, you talk about great defensive linemen. I think Renfro has a chance to be just that. Leroy Selman, who played for Oklahoma back in the early 70s, was nicknamed Big Cat. And Renfro, although not there yet, has some of the characteristics that Selman had. He didn't stay blocked very long. He's extremely quick. He's also powerful, 6'4 and 285 pounds. Junior out of Detroit. Started coming on last year, and this year he's an All-American candidate. That time he threw J.J. Joe for a loss of three, so it's third and 13. Almost had Joe again. He escapes, picks up three yards. Penalty flag down. Greg Jones almost had his first sack of his career. Very frustrating for Baylor. Playing against a pretty darn good defense with some guys who can run. And Greg Jones, Bill McCartney really likes his ability on the outside. And both of the starting outside linebackers of course, are seniors, Chad Brown and Ronnie Wolfork, so the Kennedy High School graduates going to get a chance to play. Jones, you'll see from the right side, actually left side, here he comes, almost gets J.J. Joe. Now watch the umpire take one. At least he sees us coming. Ah. Renfro says, get out of my way. That's a bad neighborhood. Sometimes you're just caught, you know. As an official, you're just in the wrong place. If you move left, you get run over. If you move right, you do. If you stand still, he tramples you. Those guys weren't padding at all? Yeah. Padding that is accustomed with somebody 50 years of age. <laughs> just a like little, me and you. Little around the middle, huh? Yep, that's the only padding they wear. Deion figures takes the Baylor punt in his own 20. Escapes a couple. 
and ends up with a return of 14 yards. A good second effort from Figures. Well, we're going to take a break in Waco. 8.45 to go. Final quarter. See you by a lot. Back in Waco, where CU leads it 50 to 24. The Buffs about to raise that record to 2 and 0 with a game in Minnesota next week. Passing yards, a lot of balls in the air today. Almost 600 yards between the two teams. Duke Tobin, a quarterback for the injured Cordell Stewart. Stewart with a bruised foot. And this is James Hill on the carry. Boy, he was met by Chris Lewis. That's a nice how do you do. Hill with a gain of seven yards on that play. As we told you earlier, a lot of CU students at Baylor University. I should say CU residents, students at Baylor University. And they all came out today. Second and two. Tobin brought down quickly at his own 29. Shea Maston, the All-American candidate at linebacker, did the sacking. Colorado with a few second-team players in the game, and they just turned the outside linebacker loose. You can see the slide protection. Both Chad Hammond and Clint Moore slide down. The unknown fans here in Waco, they've seen enough. Has it gotten that bad at Baylor? Tobin on third and seven. Oh. Intercepted. Tobin misses the tackle. And into the end zone goes Mike McFarland. That's the worst trot to the sideline you can have as a quarterback when you throw one to the other team and they run it back for a touchdown. And Tobin trying to get the ball to the outside throws this ball really. The receiver slipped down, and yet Tobin continued with the throw. I'm not sure he saw his receiver fall down. Sometimes you can, and other times you simply can't. Ray Carruth slipped down, and Duke Tobin, although I think right then he realized that there was a problem. To his credit, he hustled over and, and almost made the tackle. Of course, quarterbacks don't, don't tackle much, and Clint Moore there, too, but Michael McFarland into the end zone, and the Bears' defense puts one on the board. Baylor's going to go for two points here. Lobbed into the end zone, incomplete, but a flag. Dion Figures was on the coverage there, and Melvin Bonner was the intended receiver. That's a pretty good matchup. Big wide receiver and a very good cover. Defensive back. Figures. Well, I tell you what. I mean, if that's pass interference, then they must be watching something else. You have to allow a defensive back the ability to put his hands on a receiver, and then there's going to be some contact as both players go for the ball. I mean, that's... If you call that, that pass interference, then defensive backs really have no chance to ever stop a wide receiver at the goal line. So Baylor with another shot at the two-point conversion. This time they go up the middle, and they have it. So Baylor, needing all the points it can get its hands on, scores two more. And the Buffs lead is now 50 to 32. Now take a look at Deion Figures again. Put yourself in a defensive back's shoes. You want to get your hands on the receiver? There. That's good. Now the hands come off. Figures staying close with Bonner, the left arm up against Bonner's right arm, no way in the world that's pass interference. Maybe it's a case these officials don't usually see a guy who can cover as well as Deion Figures. He is known as one of the best coverage cornerbacks in the nation. 
The Broncos trying to make it two in a row tomorrow when the San Diego Chargers come to Mile High Stadium. NBC Sports and News 4 will be there to bring you all the game action, and I'll be in the locker room after the game for post-game interviews. It all starts with Broncos beat Sunday, tomorrow at 1 o'clock, NFL Live at 1.30, and the Chargers and the Broncos at 2 o'clock. It's all right here on NBC and News 4, the home of the Denver Broncos. 7-12 to go, fourth quarter. Baylor within 18 points. Never say die. Down by 30 points at one time. Cut that lead to 12. And it was back up to 25, and now 18. Trey Ware teeing it up for Baylor. And the return man is Charles Johnson. See you spreading the kickoff return duty around today. Charles Johnson, usually more of a punt returner than a kick returner. And we expect an onside kick here, the way Baylor's lining up. There it is. Christian Fourier, one of the better sets of hands on the team, makes the scoop. And CU keeps it at the 45 of Baylor. Coaches like to see that. Onside kick field and plainly. That was tough. That was like a short stop, quick hop. Much, much, much tougher catch than running down the field and receiving a forward pass. That thing hops crazy, bounces, high, low, skips. First down for CU at the Baylor 45. James Hill. The second effort got him back to the line of scrimmage. So there's Shea Maston on the tackle. James Hill last week against CSU, 44 yards rushing. Out of Whitefield High School. Clock ticking, 6.35 to go, final quarter. Hill again. To the 40, a gain of five. Michigan in the fourth quarter, leading Notre Dame 17 to seven. And a defensive struggle down at the academy. The Air Force Falcons down 6-3 to three in the third quarter to the Hawaii Rainbows. That's not a new style hat. That's a wet towel over somebody's head. As we've told you a few times, very muggy here in Waco. Tobin, complete to Donnell Liamidi. His first catch of his college career. Liamidi, a freshman. And he can fly, too. Just one of many who can really run. This is a good throw by Duke Tobin. The last pass goes for an interception and a touchdown. This thing, in the face of a pretty good rush, is right where Liam Meadie can handle it. He's from Pago Pago, American Samoan. Flags fly. Ball will go against CU. Duke Tobin, not too bad a day, playing for the injured Cordell Stewart. 
Away from the sideline is Stewart. Ought to be fine for the Minnesota game next week. The Buffs had such a big lead, they thought they'd give that bruised foot a rest. James Hill on first and 15 goes nowhere. Lee Bruder the tackle. CU leads it 50 to 32. Second and 16. Tobin over the middle. Liam Eady. Touchdown. The freshman out of Samoa. His first college touchdown. Boy, and Sean Craven's a linebacker is looking around and saying, hey, who's covering this guy? You'll see number 43 walked out in the slot. From the left side, you actually don't see him because he wasn't anywhere near the receiver. But Cravens had man-to-man -man coverage on Liam Eady and was nowhere near him. Lotto is good on the extra point. 5.06 to go, fourth quarter. And Dave, we're, we're sitting in the booth next to the CU coaches and handshakes all around for offensive coordinator Les Steckel. If you're not used to seeing three and four wide receiver sets, you're going to sometimes blow a coverage or two. And Cravens, number 43, right side of your screen. I don't know if we can see it here either. But you see him running after his hands in the air saying, hey! He knows he's beaten badly, and Liam Meany up the gut for a long touchdown. And Cravens right there saying, where is somebody? It can't be just me. Push-ups for every point scored. Big, strong cheerleaders by the end of this year. Well, I hope they have a shower on that plane ride home. Les Steckel, who used to coach you at CU, really done a job with this new offense. Yeah, hasn't he, he's the guy that fully understands the passing game. I think he's respected not only collegiately, but professional coaches. When you mention the name Les Steckel, they say almost unanimously, hey, he can throw the ball. He knows how to throw the ball. And he's done a nice job coordinating this offense. And one of the nicer guys around to boot. Donnell Liamiti. Well, he's got something to write home about now. His first college touchdown. That last scoring drive, five plays, 45 yards. Duke Tobin to Donnell Liamiti. Turn man for Baylor, Brandel Jackson. And Trooper Taylor in there now, too. Andrew Swayze picks up the bouncing ball across the 20 to the 23. That's where Baylor will start with it with 4.57 to go in the final quarter. The Buffs right now with 57 points. Last year, their highest point total, 58, came against Minnesota, a team the Buffs will play next week in Minnesota. And Baylor still with the starting unit on offense. J.J. Joe has gone all the way at quarterback. He keeps it. And gets to his own 45. Steve Rosga runs him out. Not quite in time, really, but this, again, what Baylor likes to do, the option, and J.J. Joe quick enough to get into the secondary and turn the corner. But you got to be in the game for this offense to be functioning. CU with a lot of second-string defensive players in now. First down, Baylor. Ooh. Oh, he is smacked and a fumble. Do they call him down? Well, he is down. I'm not sure if he was called down or that's a fumble, but Brian Diet 
really puts the leather on J.J. Joe. Diet will come from the left side of your screen and say hello to J.J. up close and personal. Ooh, whack. Brian Diet, as the rest of the CU Buff players asked before the year started, as if they could be any person, who would they be? Lots of answers of JFK, some Martin Luther King, some answered their dad, their great-grandfather. Diet answered Attila the Hunt. <laughs> right now, J.J. Joe wouldn't argue with that one. That's a defensive guy for you there, <laughs> out of Pomona High School. The running play for Baylor goes nowhere. Hendrick Bell, his first carry, and Katasic the tackle. Four minutes to go in Waco, Texas. CU with a 25-point lead. Baylor with the ball, second and five. Bell takes that pitch down to the CU 35. Ted Johnson, the tackle. Bell running downhill as Telbeck's doing the option. Already headed up field when the ball was pitched to him and a pretty good speed. And a pretty good ride from Ted Johnson, a sophomore out of Carlsbad, California. First down. Joe tries to spin away, but Greg Jones won't let him. And keep that name in the back of your mind because Greg Jones is going to be a great player for CU. Number 59, outside linebacker at Kennedy High School, has everything you look for. 6'5 and 200, about 10 pounds. He'll be 235 before he's done, probably. Second and 10. Joe slips himself and gains two yards. Let's go down to the sideline and Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thanks, Les. You guys have been talking about Greg Jones. This week in practice, I was up there, and the offensive line and the linebackers were in a little isolation drill where the linebacker would rush and the offensive tackles would try to block the outside linebackers. Nobody could block Greg Jones. Chad Brown was saying, the man is just too fast. Nobody can block him. And like you say, Dave, he is going to be a great one for this team down the road. Bus were considering redshirting him. He's getting a lot of time today. Third and eight. That's Bell again. Gets four yards on the play. Ryan Diet on the tackle. Diet and Marcellus Elder switch off back and forth on who will start each game. They're they're so close in talent. Bill McCartney doesn't want to call either one of them first string because it would be an insult to the other. So one week Diet will start, the next week Elder will start, and so on and so on. There's a timeout on the field with 2.11 to go, final quarter. Buffs just want to wrap this one up, hit the cold shower, get back to the hotel for a bite, and then we'll fly back this evening. News 4 is proud to expand its closed caption programming to include real-time captioning of all News 4 produced CU Buffs football games. This is, of course, in addition the real-time captioning of News 4 at 5 and the News 4 Late Edition at 10. Jim Hansen enjoying the Baylor University marching band. And again, his team with a cozy lead right now. Just a little more than two minutes left. Let's go to the sideline once again. Mark, what do you have? Well, Les, this game is now running on three hours and 25 minutes. And it's, it's kind of interesting. You listen to the players over here. They're saying, hey, maybe this new offense isn't such a good idea. It makes the games last way, way too long. But they don't mind it when it's 57-32, I guess. Back up to you guys. Well, that's true. You throw the ball a lot. Incompletions all. Oh, the game will take forever. Oh, look at the clock. We started it. 10 after 11. This game already has gone three minutes and six, three hours and 16 minutes. Touchdown, Baylor! 
J.J. Joe to Reggie Miller. And Dalton Simmons, the corner, really bit on the out cut. It was an out and up pattern. You'll watch here, Miller will take Simmons to the outside there. And Dalton Simmons makes the mistake that young cornerbacks frequently do. He just peaked enough that Miller was able to turn it up the sideline and Simmons could not recover. That was a good pass by Joe. High enough so that Simmons could not get a hand on it even after he recovered. The Baylor fans not giving up. Although the scoreboard would tell you otherwise. 2.02 to go. Baylor on a two-point conversion and flags on the field. The penalty is against Baylor. But they'll still go for the two points. Cordell Stewart, he must be feeling okay. Came out in the second quarter with a bruised foot. Turns out the Buffs didn't need him all that much second half. Duke Tobin has done a fine job filling in. Two-point conversion, no good. So the score remains CU 57, Baylor 38. Dave, is the clock supposed to run during a two-point conversion? No, I, I don't think so. This was a pass that Melvin Bonner dropped earlier in the game. But pretty good coverage. Well, this is the touchdown pass, excuse me. And Miller able to make a good catch in the end zone. Dalton Simmons closed the cushion, but just couldn't get his body in the air high enough. Reggie Miller made the catch. Well, the reason I asked that question about the clock is because no time came off during that two-point conversion, so we still have 2.02 to go. Seven plays, 77 yards, and three minutes and four seconds off the clock. I'm to the point now that I wish maybe they might start the clock in a two-minute conversion. Start it now. Well, you would expect another onside kick from Baylor. And that's what CU is expecting, the way they're lined up. Trey Ware, the bouncer. And CU covers it again. It's Christian Fourier. They should have learned not to kick it to him. He's got good hands. Two oh one to go, fourth quarter. Bill McCartney. This will be his 67th career win. Duke Tobin, the quarterback. See you from the Baylor 45. Incomplete. No, let me digress for a second. Speaking of McCartney, I, today he ties Eddie Crowder. For the most games as a head coach at CU. 119. Quite a milestone. There's Jeff Bruner who came out with an knee injury. Preliminary diagnosis, ligament damage. They'll know more after they take a look at the x-rays tomorrow. I'll tell you, that's a costly injury too. Bruner really solidified things in the middle and Sam Rogers is a capable backup, but you hate to lose Jeff Bruner for the year. Scott Phillips, the running play. The junior out of Lewis Palmer High School in Colorado Springs. And he
He gets it down to the 36. Gain of nine. Let me correct myself. Lewis Palmer High School is in Monument, Colorado. So you can put down the phone now in Monument. Third and one. That's Phillips again from Monument, Colorado. He gets the first down. <laughs> Just want to make sure. CU has almost doubled Baylor in a very important category, time of possession. There's one of the reasons, Duke Tobin. Kept some drives going with some crisp passing. Under a minute to go. Phillips again. The Buffs just want to run out this clock and get out of here. Baylor has one timeout left, but you don't see that coaching staff ready to take it anytime soon. They know what the score is. 57-38 CU. And Notre Dame making a game of it. In Michigan, the Wolverines lead now down to three in the fourth quarter. Tobin puts his knee down. The clock going to run out. Two, one. Double zeros. And Bill McCartney's CU Buffs are now 2-0 on the year, while Baylor, with two losses at home to open up the season, fall to 0-2. I will take a break and wrap things up here in Waco. <laughs> 